probably no surprise considering uh, John was better right players than Ken Hatfield and Brunner. Absolutely, Pete. The Air Force Academy does have a veteran team, and when you have a veteran team, you know you can perform, perform very well. And of course, with Marty Lawton, the magician at quarterback, the San Diego Aztecs will have their work cut out for them. A look at the San Diego State Ball Club. San Diego State two eight and one on the season, one five and one in the Western Athletic Conference. And we're just about ready to get this one underway. The Air Force Ball Club has won the toss. And as you know, in college football, they have a chance to exercise the, op uh, the option in the second half if they so choose. We'll be back for the kickoff of tonight's game right after these messages. The field at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium is in less than perfect condition, John Owens. They've played four games on this field. Well, this will be the fourth in three nights of pro game between the Chargers and the Raiders on Thursday night. Two high school games in the state playoffs last night and, and now this college encounter. So uh, it could be a quagmire. And you know there's going to be a lot of slick spots out there on the field. And the Air Force Academy, of course, they are going to receive the ball. Now this is going to be something because wet weather like this, Pete, you don't know whether you want to receive the ball or kick it off. Who wants to make the first game? Falcons won the toss, and as John noted, they have elected to receive. You see Air Force in their white uniforms and blue pants on the left of your screen. Air Force trying to cap what would be their most successful season since 1970 on a 52-degree evening. Rain, wind gusts in the forecast, but uh, this is a chance for Air Force to end their regular season on a positive note. And they want to end it on a high note because you know next weekend they're headed for Mississippi and the Independence Bowl. May have to check your direction on that. I think that's Louisiana, isn't it? A absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. They're playing against Mississippi. Good thing you do the sports and not the weather. You'd have a hard time with a map, huh? Absolutely. Brendan Bossy, who's a senior out of Santa Rosa, California, usually does the kicking off for the Aztecs and the deepest man in receiving formation. That's Jeff Huff of the Air Force Ball Club, getting ready to get this contest underway. You know, one of the strong points of the San Diego Aztecs is their kicking game, and here it comes. This kickoff is headed deep to the rear of the end zone where Huff lets it go out of, out of the end zone. And after the touchback, the Falcons will put the ball in play at their own 20-yard line. Here's a look, uh, John, at the Air Force offense. Quarterback Marty Lawton, number 11. Number 15 is Randy Jones, a halfback sophomore. Number three is Mike Brown from Kansas City, Missouri. Mike is a very fast halfback. At fullback, the big man, John Kirshner, number 30, a senior, one of the graduates. And he's going to be from California. Two-time all-wax selection. Kirshner lines up at the fullback spot. At the top of your screen is Mike Kirby, wide to the left. Lawton still has it. The pitches to Mike Brown. And he's finally dragged down by Torrin Nixon after he picks up a first down at the 31-yard line. So it didn't take the Air Force Ball Club much time to get that flex bone underway. Now that flex bone is definitely underway. And, of course, there he was out of bounds for a first down. Number 82 is Kirby. Number 91 is Jerry Rose, a tight end, a senior. He's from Pasadena, Texas. The Air Force Academy starts out the way they've always started out all year long. The flex bone and the magician, Lauthan, at the helm. Only four teams in Division 1A still run some variation of the wishbone. Air Force in Wyoming out of the Western Athletic Conference and uh, Auburn and Mississippi State in the Southeastern Conference. Tough to defend. Kirshner, the fullback. And he moves to about the 33-yard line for a gain of two before he's stacked up by Daryl Brown. Getting up off the bottom of the stack, Jack Eaton playing despite being a little banged up. And Roger Bender, the defensive right tackle for the Aztec Ball Club. And John Kirshner, big fullback, he makes things work for the Air Force Academy Falcons. He'll break things up the middle. And this opens up the play to the wide sides for the running backs. Marty Lauthan, a senior from Eugene, Oregon, has enjoyed great success since taking over midway through the 1981 campaign. Great leader, isn't he? He's an absolute true leader. Kirshner, the fullback, to the 43-yard line before he's dragged down from behind by Torrin Nixon, the junior out of Phoenix, who picked San Diego State over Pitt, a very heavily recruited junior college prospect. He played for Phoenix College last year. And the game to the 43 is Air Force's second first down of the ball game. They're on the march. You know, one of the weak points of the San Diego Aztecs this year has been their defense, and they're going to be put to the test this week. 
They are indeed. And uh, as we noted, John, when you never see the wishbone attack, it's difficult to prepare for it, despite the fact that uh, San Diego State had a week off last week, an extra week to get ready for the Falcons. First down, Air Force, at their own 43-yard line. Laughlin pitches the ball off, and that's Mike Brown. <laughs> oh, San there Diego State territory, it's a foot race. Mike Brown tripped oh. home at the eight-yard line, a saving tackle by Trent Collins. Now that's what Mike Brown could do best. Marty Laughlin on the pitch out to Mike Brown. Mike scooted all the way down to the two-yard line. There's Laughlin, you see him there. Fake the handoff, pitches out to Mike Brown, and Mike Brown can scoot. Mike is not that big at all. He scoots on past, he's past the 40-yard line, on down past the 30-yard line. One man to do, he has just tripped up, and he is brought down at the two-yard line. So the Air Force Academy Falcons are off and running. First and Air Force. Collins tripped him up, and Tom Rulin went all the way down the field to finally pin him. Falcons have a first and goal just beyond the seven-yard line. That's a look at Mike Brown, who'll set a Western Athletic Conference record tonight for average yards per carry. He's had a great year. Whistle sound before the play begins, and Air Force might have violated the 25-second play clock. I think that's what it was. Referee is Jack Baker. He's the man in the white cap, and he'll step off the yardage and tell us about it. Six Western Athletic Conference officials are working this ball game. And so far, the bad weather and the rain has not hurt the Air Force Academy's running attack. There's a story on the penalty. Dead ball, delay of game, Well, offense. if you could read lips, he'd be telling you it's <laughs> delay of game against Air Force. The down remains the same. It's still first down, but now it's first and goal, and the line of scrimmage is just beyond the 12-yard line. Laufen still has it. Marty Laufen dragged down by Daryl Brown, the junior out of San Diego. Laufen, quite an effective runner, went into the ball game, averaging over five yards a carry, and that's a prime requisite for a wishbone quarterback. Absolutely, it's still amazing that only three teams in the nation still run the wishbone attack. The academy calls the wishbone attack. The magician Marty, he's awfully good at faking and handling. You see Mike Kirby delivering a play from the sideline. Fisher DeBerry is the offensive coordinator for the Falcons. And the wide receivers shuttle in to carry in the plays from the sideline. Second and goal from the five-yard line for Air Force. Falcon pitches the ball to Brown running for the corner. And Mike Brown is into the end zone for an Air Force touchdown. The Falcons wait at six to nothing with a point after upcoming. And the Air Force Academy took no time in marching down the field. Runs by John Kircher along with Mike Brown. And the Air Force Academy is on the scoreboard. Six nothing Academy. Let's take a look at the replay on this. Marty Louthen fakes a handoff. Pitches back, and there he goes. It's a touchdown for the Air Force Academy Falcons. The Falcons are on top. Six to nothing. And the rain has not stopped their running attack. And not at all. Jerry Rose, the tight end, threw a great block to allow Mike Brown, number three, to score his eighth running touchdown of the season. And now Sean Pavlich, who's 36 of 39, kicking conversions this season. We'll try the point after. It's perfect. However, there is a penalty. There is indeed. And so we'll wait till uh, Jack Baker sorts it out. Pavlich, of course, is closing in on the Academy's all-time scoring record. And if this point stands, he'll be only two points away. There's Jack Baker, the referee, with the call. And the call has to go against San Diego. On the defense. Right you are. So offside the against the Aztecs. And the penalty will, will be enforced the on the kickoff with a score. Air Force 7, San Diego State nothing. Back with more from rainy San Diego right after these messages. The Air Force Academy has just driven 80 yards in just six plays on the game's initial drive to take a 7 to nothing lead. Mike Brown carrying the ball over from five yards away, so the number two rushing attack in the country has wasted no time at all getting on the scoreboard. Absolutely, and it was very nice to see them take the kickoff in this bad weather. We're looking at the instant replay again with Louthan pitching back to Mike Brown. Beautiful block there, and Mike Brown goes into the end zone to score. The Falcons on top, 6 to nothing, and the extra point was good. By Pavlich. Keep in mind that uh, San Diego State was offside, as you pointed out, on the extra point. And so Carlos Mateos, who has a strong leg anyway, will kick off from the 45 instead of the 40. Now, and know, he'll be kicking with the win. Now, you know, Carlos has a theory. If he kicks it into the end zone, he will not have a run back. And by the way, he tried to tackle one man once earlier in his career. He did, and he said he doesn't want another taste of it. <laughs> Sounds like a smart man. <laughs> so Carlos wants to boot it deep into the end zone. One other reason for him to try to avoid having a kick return in tonight's game, Jim Sandusky, who will be the deep man for San Diego State, is averaging almost 
33 yards per kick return. In fact, he's taken one 97 yards for a score earlier this year. That's a look at Sandusky, who is all Western Athletic Conference as both a kick return man and a wide receiver, a dangerous man. And the Falcons have to stop Sandusky tonight. This boat is heading for Sandusky at about the two-yard line. And the senior from Othello, Washington, has some running room, and he's finally knocked down at about the 28-yard line. Among the tacklers, Dwan Wilson, number 24, and Tom Rotello, number 45. So we'll get a look at the Aztecs on offense for the first time, John. A very good run back for Sandusky. Mark McKay, quarterback senior, he will be starting at quarterback. Dan Gaston, a running back, a junior from California for the San Diego Aztecs. Mike Waters will be their big fullback. Mike hasn't had such a terrific year, but he's still in there battling. Now the Aztecs have the ball. They go to work from their own 29-yard line. Mark McKay is in his second year as the starter for the Aztecs. Sandusky, number seven, is the man in motion. And McKay, a 55% passer, flips the ball out to the fullback, Waters. And Mike Waters has oh, a lot of running go. room. Mike Waters dragged down at the Air Force Academy 46-yard line on a saving tackle by Carl Jedene, number 49, the outside linebacker, a senior from Chicago. And just words no quicker got out of my mouth and what happens here he goes again a little flare pass back and he has a lot of daylight in front of him gets past two or three tacklers there for the Air Force Academy it's tough to tackle someone in this quagmire that we have going right now but Jedine tackles him but San Diego Aztecs are on the march at this moment they operate from just beyond the Air Force 46 yard line and Jim Sandoz number seven is in motion again on the delay what a hit a great tackle by John Ziegler, the right tackle, as Mike Waters, the fullback, could never get started. Ziegler is a sophomore from Excelsior, Minnesota. Watch this hit, John. And John has played this way all year long, and of course he held up his hand in the form of a claw. There's a handoff out. There's Ziegler. He sticks him real good. Rod McNeil, number 65, was trying to lay a block on him, but Ziegler was by before McNeil could get his shoulders squared. Loss of two, second and 12 for the Aztecs, and they're working from their own, from the Air Force 48-yard line. The flip is to Waters, the fullback. And he's knocked down at the 46. First man to hit him was Sean Smith. That's not surprising. He's the leading tackler on the Air Force ball club. And Chris Funk, one of the heroes of the Notre Dame win, also in on the tackle. And we do have a wide receiver, Jim Sandusky. Then we have Vince Warren, a wide receiver. And he's a junior in New Mexico. Jeff Spick, tight end, a senior from Orange, California. Mike Wells, a big tight end. And he's a senior from Quincy, California, number 87. Third down and 10 for the San Diego State Ball Club. Trailing Air Force by a score of 7 to nothing, with 10.38 and counting down to play in the first period. All is spotted at the Air Force 46-yard line. Jim Sandusky is the man in motion. Mike Waters is the only setback. McKay, with lots of time, can't connect with Dan Gaston coming out of the backfield. And so San Diego State will have to give up the football. Good stand by Air Force's defense after that initial long play on the very first play from scrimmage for the Aztecs. Absolutely. Gaston was wide open. McKay just underthrew the ball, but however, you can't fault him for that. It's wet out there, and rain's still coming down. San Diego State features the country's premier punter in Mike Saxon. Number one in the country, he's averaging 46.2 yards per punt. He's in punt formation here. Number nine, Saxon, a senior from Arcadia, California, will receive the snap from Steve Bullington, an undersized but very accurate long snapper, and Mike Kirby is deep for the academy. Just as I said, he was accurate. Bullington fires back a high snap. Kirby will have nothing to do with this punt. And it rolls dead deep in Air Force territory at about the two. A 44-yard punt by Mike Saxon. That's a big reason why he's leading the country in that category. Absolutely. Mike Saxon has a wonderful leg, and he can really boot the ball. Now, the Air Force Academy Falcons are down at the two-yard line and deep to into their own territory. The Falcons lead the Aztecs 7-0, and John and I will be back with more from San Diego right after these messages. Coming up in the week ahead, Pat Boone and Dottie West host a holiday special country style with guest stars Alabama, Shelley West, and Minnie Pearl on Christmas Legend of Nashville. That's next Friday at 6.30 following the evening edition of News Center 11 here on KKTV. Air Force has the ball at their own three-yard line, and John Kirshner tries to find some running room. He's lucky to pick up a yard before he's knocked down by the interior lineman of the San Diego State Ball Club, coached by Doug Scoville, a man in the headset who looks just as wet as everybody else on the sideline. Scoville, in his third year at San Diego State, and this season's been a struggle for him, John. And, of course, Scoville is able to bring along a lot of quarterbacks, and some of them have made it to the pro leagues. 
They have indeed. He was the uh, head coach at Pacific and uh, the quarterback coach at Brigham Young before he took the job. But uh, that's Mark Melcher limping off the field for the Air Force Academy. He's an outstanding uh, lineman, the right guard. He's replaced by Joe Jose out of Phoenix, a sophomore. Air Force can ill afford to gain any injuries in this final regular season game of 1983. On second down and a little better than eight yards to go, that's Marty Louthan looking for running room, and he's down at about the seven-yard line by Jack Eaton and Tom Rulin. Rulin is a senior from Fort Collins, Colorado, who was a high school quarterback, and now he's playing a linebacker for San Diego State, a very versatile athlete who was a walk-on last year here at San Diego State. Yes, but Marty did a good thing. He saw the pitch-out man was covered. He decided to eat the ball. John, you sure don't want any mistakes deep in your own territory, do you? No, the Falcons' 7 0 lead isn't strong at this point. On a wet field, you never know what may happen. You do not want to give San Diego State anything to make a comeback real quick to turn the tables. Falcons up by a touchdown. Just over nine minutes to play in the first period of play. You're looking at Marty Louthan, the senior quarterback, in his final regular season game. Louthan has the first down. He's to the 20, and he's finally ridden out of bounds by Daryl Brown, the junior out of San Diego. Marty Louthan, however, running the option to perfection. You know, that's a beautiful play. Marty Louthan has continued to do this all year long. Watch it on our replay now. Marty fakes a handoff. John Kirster goes around the left end, and Marty is on his way to a big gain and a first down for the Air Force Academy Falcons, and they're on the march once again. Big gain is right, John. He picks up 20, uh, 21 yards on this carry. And now Air Force has some breathing room as they have the ball just short of their own 29-yard line. You know, San Diego's had a problem all year long on defense. Injuries have been a factor for the Aztecs as well. That's the fullback, Kirshner. Tom Rulon stands him up. And that's Roland number 58, fighting him backwards. Kirshner, though, all Western Athletic Conference again this season, and he moved to the 31 for a gain of three. And John Kirshner shows again why he's one of the best fullbacks in the White Conference. That's a position that the Air Force Academy team that these cheerleaders root for have a good depth at between uh, all wax selection John Kirshner and uh, Ted Sunquist, the Brews brothers. That's a fine combination at fullback. That's right. When John Kirshner is out of there and Sunquist comes in, you don't lose that much, if any. Second down for the Aztecs and seven yards to go. The ball is, or for the Falcons, I should say, the ball is at the Falcon 31-yard line. Laufen pitches the ball to Mike Brown, and Brown is upended as he hits the 35-yard line as Tom Rulon, number 58, got under his legs and turned him over, and Brown at only 5'9 and 174 really took a tumble as he picked up yardage here. Now, that was a great tackle by Rulon because if he had not stopped Mike Brown, Mike Brown had a lot of daylight in front of him. There's a tackle right there. Up and over went Mike Brown. Third down three upcoming for the Air Force team. The Falcons leading the Aztecs 7 to nothing with 7.35 to go in the first period. And the rain continues to pour. Marty Louthan surveys the defensive front, runs the option again. He pitches the ball over the head of Randy Jones, and Jones has to come back and corral it with Mike Wilder, the strong safety on top of him. And uh, there again, we talked about the flex bone or wishbone being a high-risk offense. It's like a jump ball there. We'll see it again. Now, that's what the Falcons have to be concerned with tonight due to the rain, the wet, slippery ball. Marty Laughlin has the ball, decides to pitch it out, gets away from the running back, and, of course, it goes out of bounds. It's recovered by the Air Force before it goes out of bounds, and the Falcons are going to have to punt. You know, Laufen has been bothered by a bad left shoulder, and that play was being run to the left, so in addition to the wet ball, that could have been a problem as well. Absolutely. That's Jeff Kubiak, who's averaging 43.3 yards per punt. And he's booting the ball in the direction of Jim Sandusky, but Sandusky will have nothing to do with this one as it rolls to the 31-yard line. So the first punt by Kubiak is a good one. Air Force leading by a score of 7 to nothing, And we'll be back to San Diego right after these messages. You know, Air Force football is a special exclusive of KKTV Channel 11 and is made possible by the support of many fine Colorado Springs advertisers like First Cafeteria, Mazda, and Radio 793. San Diego State has the football first down at their own 32-yard line, and Mark McKay gives the ball to Dan Gaston. Gaston finds some running room, and Carl Jedine knocks him down from behind after a gain of about eight yards at the San Diego State 40-yard line. That was a beautiful play to the right side when Gaston, as McKay gave him the handoff, and he picked up about eight yards on the play. Dan Gaston is... Uh, 
a junior and a junior college transfer out of Cardiff, California. Second down two for the Aztecs. They've been running a lot of one back sets in recent games, but they have two backs lined up here. Mike Waters is the fullback, Gaston is the halfback, and they send Jim Sandusky number seven in motion. Waters up the middle, has no running room, and he's dragged down by uh, Charlie Heath, the defensive end, number 37. He's a senior out of Houston who went into the game with 65 tackles. He's had a productive year for the Falcons. That's right. The interior line of the defensive team for the Air Force Academy stopped him. And you know, so far, Jim Sandusky has been pretty quiet. So far. He's a dangerous man, one of the top receivers in the camp. Very dangerous receiver. Third down upcoming for San Diego State and two yards to go. The Aztecs have the ball at their own 40, trailing Air Force by a score of 7 to nothing with 5.20 to go in the first period. Jim Sandusky is the man in motion. McKay, there's a penalty flag down, and intercepted. Down the sideline goes Pat Malakowski and oh. he's dragged down at the two-yard line by Dan Gaston. But keep in mind the penalty flag was dropped way back at the 41-yard line. If the interception stands, it would set a new academy record or a tie an academy record for interceptions. It would be the 22nd of the season by the Air Force team. That's a remarkable figure. I think the Air Force Academy has the ball. Jack Baker will give us the indication, and it is illegal motion on the against offense. the San Diego State offense. First down and goal to go for the Air Force at the San Diego State 2. Let's watch the interception again here. And San Diego, could, what a bad spot for this to happen to San Diego. There were a team on the march. Ball is picked off. Looks like he's going to go all the way for a touchdown. However, he will not make it in. Knocked down about the three-yard line, but the Falcons are hot and ready to go in for another score. And it was Jedene 49, not Malakowski 48, that made the interception for... Carl Jedene, that is his third interception of the season. First and goal for the Falcons. That's Sunquist. Touchdown Air Force. The Falcons lead it by 13 to nothing with a point after upcoming. And just like we said before, when you take John Kirshner out of there and Ted Sunquist comes in, the Bruise Brothers, you don't lose a thing. So Ted Sunquist heads for the bench after scoring his third TD of the season. And we'll see it again here. Marty Lawson at the helm, the magician working. Hands it off real quick to Ted Sunquist. Up and over through the stack for the touchdown. The Falcons on top, six to nothing. And the extra point is upcoming. Sean Pavlich could tie the Academy record for scoring with a successful point after here. This would be his second of the ball game. It's almost automatic when Sean is in. You're absolutely right. Pavlich goes on the point after 5.03 to go in the first period of the score. Air Force 14, San Diego State nothing. Dan and I will be back with more right after these messages. Air Force has taken a lead of 14 to nothing as Carl Jedene intercepted a pass and then Ted Sunquist bolted over from the two-yard line. So the Falcons have a two-touchdown advantage in the early going with 5.03 to go in the first period. Let's watch the interception by Jedene here. And we'll see the interception here. McKay has time. He flips it out. Jedene, man on the spot at that particular time, picks it off. Looks like he's going in for the touchdown. He will be stopped at the three-yard line. Jedene, a very fast man. However, he is tackled at the three-yard line. The Falcons jump out now to a big 14-0 lead as the touchdown will score. Ted Sunquist, as we said, the man that bolted over from two yards away. Doug Scoville with plenty of problems on the San Diego State bench as Carlos Mateos picks off for Air Force. And this one bounces into the end zone, and Jim Sandusky will touch it down to advance the ball to the 20-yard line after the touchback. Hey, John, there's a new Heisman Trophy winner just crowned tonight. He's Mike Rozier of Nebraska. No big surprise to the entire nation. However, there are some. Uh, Steve Young, did you remember him? Oh, yeah. Ah, quarter quarterback for BYU. He was in the running along with it. But no big surprise, Mike Rozier, the Heisman Trophy winner for 1983 from Nebraska. Here at San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium, you get a good look at the rain coming down on quarterback Mark McKay in the San Diego State offense as they go to work from their own 20-yard line for their third possession of the first period. That's Dan Gaston, the running back. And Gaston is hit by Chuck Peterson and knocked out of bounds at about the 26, maybe the 27-yard line in San Diego State territory. San Diego State not panicking, though, trying to establish a running game and try to climb back into the ball game. They certainly don't want to get blown out early. Well, this is the only way to do it. Why worry and hurry your passes? Because Sandusky 
is being double teamed by the Air Force Academy Falcons, and you cannot ill afford another touchdown to be picked off for the Coyotes. Mike McKay began his college career at Wyoming, went to College of the Sequoias, spent a year at Georgia. Now he's in his second year as the starting quarterback for San Diego State. Checks out Air Force's defensive front. Gives the ball off to Mike Waters, the fullback. And Waters is stacked up by Charlie Heath, the defensive end, and Mike Sean Waters Smith, the left linebacker. A pair of seniors, two They're fine athletes. Yards. And Waters has been averaging about 4.4 yards per game. The gain to the 31 is a first down for San Diego State. They now have only two first downs in the ball game, one rushing and one passing. They need a long drive. Vince Warren comes out wide to the bottom of your screen, number one, and Jim Sandusky, number seven, is at the top. First down, San Diego State at their own 31. That's Sandusky, the man in motion. Mike Waters, the fullback. He was stopped by the entire Falcon team. He didn't get very far. Sean Smith, number 36, among the tacklers. Smith, the Falcons' leading tackler. He also led the team in tackles a year ago. A senior from Guthrie, Oklahoma. And Tom Stanbury, the right linebacker, aiding on the play. And both of those men are always around the ball. Doug Scoville and the brain trust for the San Diego State Aztec Ball Club. Under the gun this season with a 2 8 and 1 record overall going into tonight's game, 1 5 and 1 in Western Athletic Conference competition. Second and seven from the Aztec 34. Complete to Waters, and he can't get around A.J. Scott, who plays the Falcon position. He's a defensive back. A.J. Scott, a fine athlete, a junior from O'Fallon, Illinois, corralling uh, Mike Waters coming out of the backfield for a two yard catch. Well, the Falcon is here. <laughs> Falcon is still wet. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> the game to the 36 yard line third down upcoming for San Diego State is the Falcon and a very sparse and dripping wet crowd to look on Air Force leading 14 nothing 318 to go in period number one third and five they need a badly Mike McKay and it's complete to the tight end Jeff Speck has his 13th reception of the season. Greg Zoniger was there to make the tackle, but not before San Diego State picks up a first down. Let's watch Jeff Speck, and we'll look at the Air Force defense here. The Air Force defense, as you can see, they are double-teaming Sandusky. Goes to his tight end. Knocked down, however, not before a first down is made. Gain of nine on the play, so first down for the Aztecs at their own 45-yard line. And in order for them to get back into the ballgame, this is what they have to do. You're saying they should hang on to the ball, move down the field gradually? Absolutely. Mike McKay looking for the short pass. Throws the ball to Jim Sandusky. That's his first catch of the night. Dwan Wilson knocked him out. Sandusky now has 67 catches on the season. He's high in the national rankings in that category. He's number six. Sandusky should be careful in throwing in the direction of Dwan Wilson. Dwan has picked off a couple this year. Three interceptions for the sophomore Dwan Wilson out of Wynn, Arkansas. He was a great high school quarterback. Yes, he was. And Coach Ken Hatfield fought for a while about using him at that quarterback position whenever there's some injuries. The ball is at the Air Force 47-yard line, second and two for the Aztecs. Okay to the air again. Over the that, middle. That's complete to Jeff Speck, and the tight end is dragged down at the Air Force 39 by Tom Span Stanbury, number 58. Stanbury, a senior from Grand Blanc, Michigan, is tied for number two in tackles going into the game. For Speck, that's his 14th catch of the year. Now, the middle has been wide open, and it seems like San Diego now is beginning to pick it up. I'm figuring that since Air Force is doubling up on Sandusky, and Vince Warren, the other wide receiver, they'll work on the middle with their tight ends. Huh? And you have to double up Sandusky. He's that dangerous. Aztecs have a first down at the Air Force 40-yard line after that seven-yard pickup. They began the sequence at their own 20. McKay goes to the middle again, and this time he has Mike Waters, the fullback. And Sean Smith finally drags him down with some help from Steve Kelly, number 50, the junior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And Juan Wilson, number 24. But Waters is showing that he's an effective pass catcher, as we'll see again here. Now, when McKay does get time, you can see he does have a rifle arm. He just loops it over the center. And Air Force converges. Three men have to stop him to bring him down. San Diego is on the march. That's their fourth first down of this sequence. They began at their own 20. Now they have the ball at the Air Force 30-yard line. And you see the umpire, Jim Godfrey, trying to keep the ball as dry as possible. The rain has begun to let up a little bit anyway. Just a little. <laughs> 
That's what I said before I left Thursday. <laughs> Mike McKay checking out the Air Force defense, and he may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Corey Gilmore is Here in the running back spot. Wide open, Jim Sandusky. Sandusky down Touchdown. the sideline into the end zone. Jim Sandusky with his eighth TD of the season, and Air Force's lead is now 14 to six with a point after upcoming. And that is a man that you have to watch. So the fans that have sat through the deluge at Jack Murphy Stadium finally have something to cheer about as they watch Jim Sandusky, who began his career at Nevada, Las Vegas, pick up his eighth touchdown on this play. And here's the replay. Sandusky gives a fake to the inside, goes to the outside. He's wide open. McKay lays it in his arms, and there are six points. Seelan Nadeau is on to try the point after touchdown. His first PAT attempt of the season for San Diego State. Jim Plum, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Steve Bullington snaps it a little high, but the boot is good. And with 140 to play in the first period, the score is now Air Force 14, San Diego State 7. You made a good point a moment ago, John Owens, when you suggested that Sandusky and the Aztecs, to get back into the ballgame after falling behind by two touchdowns early, would have to slowly move the ball down the field and reestablish their offense. And That's on this 30-yard right. pass, Jim Sandusky put San Diego State back in the ballgame. Jim Sandusky, McKay's favorite receiver, is on the receiving end of six-pointer right here. Now, he's been double-teamed by the Air Force Academy all day. However, he made a little fake to the inside, went to the outside as a quick six points. San Diego State is on the board and back in this ballgame. Mike McKay has just tossed his 13th TD pass of the year, and that's Sandusky, who's just caught his 8th TD pass of the season. He's only gotten one year of eligibility at San Diego State because he transferred at Nevada, Las Vegas, and had to sit out a year, but he's made the most of his opportunity to play for the Aztecs, despite the fact that San Diego State's had a disappointing season. And Jim McKay is very glad to have a Sandusky on the team this year. You bet. So after the 30-yard TD pass and the successful Point after touchdown by Nadeau. San Diego State will kick off, and you see the Aztecs deploying. And San Sandusky is what they really need. Someone to open the game up. Of course, they set him up well by tossing the ball to their tight ends and running backs over the middle. And the Aztecs did not panic when it was 14-0 Air Force. So they're back into this ball game. That's Jeff Huff, averaging better than 18 yards per kickoff return this season. He's the deep man for the Falcons. Brendan Bossy will kick off. He usually wears number 13. He's gone number 11 for tonight's game. This is high and somewhat short. Might be tough to handle. That was Sunquest, who couldn't handle it, but he knocked it out of bounds at about his own 16-yard line. Air Force will begin this possession with the downright lousy field position that's spotted right there at the 15. And I thought perhaps uh, Sunquist would let that ball go out of bounds was angling in that direction. Watch it again here. It's dangerous to let it go, though, because it's a free ball. There it is. He did touch it, and luckily it did go out of bounds because the Aztecs were bearing down on Sunquist. So the Air Force Academy Falcons about to go back to work. They scored early uh, with 12.23 to go in the first quarter. Mike Brown capped an 80-yard drive with a five-yard TD run. And there's Brown with a gain to about the 21-yard line. Mike Brown can go inside or outside for the Falcons. Daryl Brown, no relation, and Thomas Carter made the tackle on him. Stop at number 55, Thomas Carter. It's always good to have a fullback in there by the name of Kirshner or Sunquist. You can hand off to a fast-running halfback like Mike Brown. That's Mike Kirby coming out of the lineup as the Air Force Academy is shuttling in wide receivers to carry the plays in from the sidelines. Line of scrimmage is the Air Force 21-yard line, and it's second and four, and this is the fullback, Kirshner, fumbling the football, and, the Air and San Diego State has it. Kirshner fumbles, and Kenny Moore, the freshman, a red shirt out of Los Angeles, comes up with it at the Air Force Academy 33-yard line. We'll see it again here. And this is exactly what the San Diego Aztecs wanted. Lawson hands off to Kirshner. He has a hole. However, he leaps over one man, and that is where he will lose the ball. John, that's only the 16th turnover all season by Air Force. The Air Force Academy... must be tough on a series of downs. You do not want San Diego to get back into the contest. But the Aztecs have the ball at the Air Force 33-yard line. Jim Sandusky is the man in motion, number seven. And that's Dan Gaston with the football. Sean Smith stands him up and then knocks him down after a gain of about three near the 30-yard line. And Dwan Wilson, the left corner, came up to support the run. Gaston off the right side for a couple of yards. 
John, this telecast is a total community effort and is only possible because of the Colorado Springs advertising community lending their support. Advertisers like Hickory House Restaurant, Bob Pink is Volvo, and Bircham's Office Products. Be sure and tell them you appreciate seeing the game. Fun for us to be here, isn't it? Absolutely. The first live local telecast of an Air Force Academy away game right here on Channel 11. Second and seven for the Aztecs. And that's Dan Gaston finding some running room and moving down to the 23-yard line before John Ziegler finally knocks him down. That could be the last play of the first period. Greg Zolniger came up from his safety position to help on the tackle. Now, this is where the Air Force Academy must stiffen. It seems like San Diego has momentum once again. Now, here goes McKay. Gives a handoff again. And Gaston now is starting to run over the Air Force Academy Falcon tacklers. Two or three tacklers taken to bring him down this time. Gaston's a 5'10", 180-pounder out of Cardiff, California, who was primarily a track man in high school. Good look at Dan Gaston. Three seconds to go in the quarter. And they just get the last play of the quarter off. It's Gaston again. And as he whacked. Chris Funk, number 96, and Greg Zoniger, number 16, making the tackle on Dan Gaston as the first period concludes. So that's the end of the first quarter. That's the Air Force Academy band. With a score, Air Force 14, San Diego State 7. We'll be back with a second period of play right after these messages. That's in the first period, John. Air Force outrushed San Diego State 129 yards to 34. San Diego State outpassed Air Force 92 to nothing. And at the end of the quarter, it's Air Force 14 and San Diego State 7. Second period about to get underway. Now, that's what the Aztecs do best, their passing attack. When you have a Jim Sandusky in there at the Air Force Academy Falcon, looks like he's in the dry finally. <laughs> that little guy looks like he's having a good time, too. <laughs> San Diego State has a second down seven at the Air Force 19-yard line. They recovered a fumble a moment or two ago and moved from the Air Force 33 to the 19, and that's Mike Waters fumbling the football. It cannot be advanced, but it's picked up by Carl Jedene at the end, and Air Force takes over after San Diego State's second turnover of the night and 30th of the season. Now, that's what the Air Force Academy does best. They force fumbles, and the Falcons are just such a disciplined team. You'll see it right here. The handoff from McKay. Goes in the middle of the line, he has stopped, the ball comes free, and the Air Force Academies are on the march once again now. They stopped a big drive for San Diego Aztecs, and we have to see if this will not play a part in this ball game. They had momentum on their side at the moment. Jed and they had an interception that led to a touchdown in the first period, and now he picks up a fumble. He's having a busy night. Carl's always around the ball. Marty Louthan takes over, directing the offense for the Air Force Academy, and he gives the ball to John Kirshner, the fullback, who moves to the 24-yard line before he's dragged down from behind by Herb Braun, number 46, a junior from Anaheim, California, who's had to get over some injuries before he could get back in the Aztec lineup. Now, in this drive, the Falcons may be disciplined. They may just drive the ball down the field, handing off to Kirshner, see if they can tack six more into the end zone quickly. Line of scrimmage is the 24-yard line in Air Force territory, and the Falcons will have a second and five. Second periods have been important for Air Force during the course of the season en route to their 8-2 and two record. They've outscored their opposition 105-55 to 55 in second quarters alone. That's Louthan operating the option, and Thomas Looks Carter like a drags him mask. down by the face mask. Absolutely. You're exactly right. Absolutely. So we'll have a major walk-off against San Diego State. Carter, you see him there, number 55, penetrated, reached out, and used the face mask as a handle to bring... Marty Lothan to the muddy turf. And all officials seen it. Check out the yellow flags. I'm betting that wasn't a difficult penalty to call. We'll watch it again here. Here's a replay, and without a doubt, he went for the face mask. He might not have gone for it, but that's what he wound up with. There it is right there. Ooh. A 15-yard penalty. There are two kinds of face, face mask, mask penalties. Defense, There's the five-yard misdemeanor and the 15-yard penalty, and first the latter is what San Diego State has just been hit with. 15 yards against the Aztecs, moves the ball all the way to the Air Force 40-yard line where the Falcons will have another first down. And the Aztecs can ill afford to have another score attacked on by the Air Force Academy. Randy Jones fumbles the football and San Diego State has it. It might be Thomas Carter who fell on the ball. Jones couldn't find the handle and it is Thomas Carter who comes up with the football. He's known as a big play player. He has an interception going into the game and now his first fumble recovery of 1983. First down San Diego State. We'll see it again here. Marty Lothan gives a handoff to Randy Jones and Randy Jones, he never did have control of the ball. 
it is just entirely too wet out there, so it's turnaround. Both teams have now fumbled. San Diego State fumbled when they were deep in Falcon territory, and the Falcons have now fumbled, and they were around the 50-yard line. We noted earlier that going into tonight's game, John Air Force had only committed 15 turnovers, but on the sloppy turf and in the rain in San Diego, they've committed two already, and we're barely into the second period. In the Air Force 46, Mike McKay goes to work under pressure from Ziegler. He overthrows Jim Sandusky. Jim Ziegler really putting a lot of heat on McKay, the San Diego State quarterback. And it's a good thing he did overthrow him because the Falcons had three defensive backs right around Sandusky. Carl Jedene was moving back in pass coverage, showing what a versatile athlete he can be from his outside linebacking position. Jedene is all over the field, and at times you'll see him put a big rush on the quarterback himself. That's Mike McKay calling the plays for San Diego State, or at least relaying them from the sidelines. The tight ends alternate for the Aztecs, bringing the plays in. McKay, a senior from Visalia, California. Second and ten. It's a draw play to Mike Waters, the fullback, and he's inside the 40, down at the 37-yard line in the arms of... Sean Smith, number 36. Smith, the senior from Guthrie, Oklahoma, was quite a high school wrestler at 178 pounds in the high school All-American. And Waters is now a junior, you know, and, uh, of course, they'll be glad to see him come back again next year as far as San Diego State fans are concerned. The game to the Air Force 38-yard line sets up a third down three for San Diego State. Air Force leads the Aztecs 14-7, and we have about 13-10 remaining to be played in the first half of play. Long count by Mark McKay. Just two seconds left on the play clock when he took the snap from center. He throws to Vince Warren, incomplete. The pass was a little bit behind him. And Chuck Peterson, number 33, the right corner, was the man covering Vince Warren on the play. Well, that was a catchable pass. And it seems like the San Diego Aztecs are going to try to do what they do best, try to come back. McKay, over the middle, a catchable pass, hits him in a bad place of hands, and he drops <laughs> the ball. And you see Peterson coming up to cover as Doug Scoville stocks the San Diego State bench. That's Mark McKay, number 14. The line of scrimmage, the 37-yard line in Air Force territory, and the field goal kicker, Celine, uh, Celine Nadeau, started off the sideline as you look at Mike Kirby, the deep man. Now a flag is dropped as San Diego State violates the play clock. They'll move the ball back five yards, bring the punter in, and Mike Saxon, who has a... A high punting average will shoot for the coffin corner. Well, Pete, I don't know if you noticed, we've been so wet up here that the rain has seemed to let up. Dead ball, delay a game, it's offense. Than it was, oh, when the ball game first got underway. Fourth down and after the penalty, eight yards to go for San Diego State. The ball spotted at the Air Force 43-yard line. We noted the first time Saxon tried to punt that he leads the country in punting average. Not much pressure. He's aiming for the corner. And it goes it. out of bounds, and we'll see where the official That's spots it. Looks like the... Well, they haven't spotted it yet. Now they're standing at the 10-yard line. So if that's where they're going to put it now, there might have been a penalty flag dropped uh, back at the 40-yard line, and the officials are going to talk things over. Should be illegal procedure. Illegal motion against the Aztecs. And we'll be back five more, and the option rests with Air Force. You think they'll take the penalty? I think so. If they do, you think they'll go for the block? Force them to kick once again. That's Mike Saxon coming back out on the field, so two penalties in a row for San Diego State. And that'll move the ball back to the Air Force 48-yard line, where it now will be fourth and 13, and Saxon comes back to work. There's the five-yard walk-off by the referee, Jack Baker. And the indication... Illegal motion, illegal motion. on the offense. For all of you who have just tuned in to watch the CBS Saturday movie, due to tonight's game, Quarterback Princess, starring Helen Hunt as the first female football player, will be shown later this evening at 10.30, following the new Center 11 update with Kelly McHenry, Paul Pack, and Jed Jackson here on 11. Mike Saxon punts again. Fair catch, Mike Kirby, and he makes the catch and then gets hit. <laughs> and there goes the penalty play. Herb Boris, who's a backup center, number 54, is the man that hurt him. When a team is having problems as San Diego State has in the late stages of this season, everything seems to go wrong. Watch the penalty here. Is that Kirby still down on the field? There he is, and there it's a hit. And he was vulnerable, and look at Voris trying to hold him up as if the <laughs> official didn't see him. There's the indication. It looked like he said, I'm sorry. 
And there is an Air Force man down on the field. We'll see the penalty marked off, and then we'll check the injured player. If it's Kirby, that would be a, any loss would be a big loss, of course. But Kirby's played so very well for Air Force this season. Well, one of the best wide receivers around. Absolutely, that's a major penalty. Dead ball, Dead personal ball foul, foul. Personal on foul the defense. against San Diego First State. Personal foul on the Aztec. And uh, the Air Force Academy will set up shot at their own 34-yard line. But in the meantime, as we look at the San Diego State bench, the fine Air Force training staff is still attending one of the players who was banged up on the punt return, and we're guessing it might be Mike Kirby. 12.47 to play in the first half. We'll be back with more from San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium right after we pause for these messages. Dick Clark was just banged up on the last play and helped to the sideline. Now Air Force has the ball first down at their own 31 after a major 15-yard walk-off against San Diego State. And Marty Lauthan, the quarterback, keeps the football. And look at him go. But there's a yellow flag. The flag was dropped way back at the line of scrimmage near the 31-yard line. If the play stands, it's a first down for Air Force, but uh, the indication is offside against Air Force. This one's coming back. Costly penalty for the Falcons here. Beautiful fake by Marty Louthan, magician. Marty Louthan has the ball, and he goes for a wonderful gain. However, it's all negated back because of the yellow flag. So that'll move the ball back to the 26-yard line where it will be first and 15 for the Air Force Academy team. Five yards marched off by referee Jack Baker. Offside. I'm wondering about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's one of the shows originally scheduled for this hour, but will not be seen due to tonight's football game. Lots of other holiday entertainment is in store, however, like a Christmas carol tomorrow at 3 p.m. here on 11. Falcons have it first and 15. And they break the bone this time with... Brown in his slot. That's the fullback Sundquist. Uh, no, Kirshner and Kirshner, muddy jersey and all, moves to about the 32 or 3 yard line. Roger Bender, number 76, was the first man to trip him up. He gained back the penalty yardage and maybe a yard more. They put it at the 32. It'll be second and nine. And at any moment, I'm expecting to see a pass out of that flex bone. Haven't seen one yet. Jeff Huff delivers the play from the sidelines for Air Force. There goes Mike Kirby wide. Kirby is wide right, and you're looking at John Kirshner, the fullback, and Mike Brown, and the fake is to Kirshner. Lauthan keeps the ball, pitches it to Brown, and Brown is hit by Kenny Moore initially in the backfield and then pinned by Tom Rulon, number 58, right at the 35-yard line after a gain of three. Great defensive play by Ken Moore on that play. There's a San Diego State player down. Might be Mike Arrier, number 93, and you see him there. Area is a redshirted freshman from Bakersfield, California, and uh, he was trampled as the Air Force guards pulled out to begin that option sweep. It's been a hard-hitting game. We've seen a couple of guys need attention during the course of the ball game. And you know, with the field as muddy as it is, you cannot get your footing. That, makes, is, that makes every player out there very vulnerable to injuries. Hope is that Arie is not uh, seriously hurt. He was all league, both offensively and defensively, in high school, also a fine high school basketball player, and uh, they're taking a long look at what I think is his right leg. A big loss for San Diego State if he does have to come out of the ball game. Injuries have been a big factor in the problems that the Aztecs have had in 1983. And that's how the Airports Academy, their, their season has been relatively injury-free, and they keep right on rolling. John, these guys are real fans, aren't they? Diehards, we call them. We have a timeout on the field. 11.39 to go on the half with the score. The Falcons 14, the Aztecs 7. We'll be back right after these words. Tomorrow night at 6.30, Joe Campanella hosts a surprise salute to a guy who makes his living in this stadium, Rolf Panerska, place kicker for the San Diego Chargers. On the new This Is Your Life, immediately following News Center 11 here on KKTV. Along with John Owens, I'm Pete Solomon at rainy San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium where the Falcons lead San Diego State 14-7 and they have the football. Marty Louthan looking for Mike Brown. 
and Brown fights for the ball and makes the catch at the no it's intercepted Picked by Torrin Nelson up. his fourth of the season and he took it out of the hands of Mike Brown first down San Diego State and the third Falcon turnover great play by Nixon that was a great play by Nixon it seemed like Marty Lawton hesitated just a little bit too long Marty goes back the first pass of the game we've been waiting on a passing play from the flex bone he fakes it airs it out once and the ball holds up just a little bit too long and Nixon makes a great interception so San Diego will take over the ball. Very unusual to see an Air Force team commit three turnovers in one game. Now the officials step in before the ball is marked ready for play and call an official's timeout, and they may switch balls before the Aztecs snap their first play of this sequence, snap the ball for their first play of this sequence, which will begin at the San Diego State 33-yard line. 11 and a half minutes to play in the half, and John, I know you have a busy halftime plan. Yes, we do. We have uh, General Scott, the superintendent of the Air Force Academy, will be on here to talk to us. Mark McKay, the San Diego State quarterback, has time, and he can't connect with Mike Wells, the tight end. Carl Jedney was covering on the play. Jedney's had a very productive first half, hasn't he? And McKay is back to his tricks again. He's going right over the middle. Air Force fans probably remember that Mike Wells had an eight-yard touchdown catch at Air Force in the game these teams played last year. That's Torin Nixon who picked off the pass a moment ago to give San Diego State the ball. Second and ten for the Aztecs and they're operating from their own 33-yard line. That's Dan Gaston, the running back. He has room. And he's knocked out of bounds at about the 42-yard line by Carl Jedney. Jedney started the game number four on the team in tackles and already tonight he has a fumble recovery and an interception and he's just knocked Dan Gaston out of bounds but not before Gaston picked up so much yardage that it's close enough for uh, a measurement. Ken Hatfield looks on from the Air Force sideline. Ken is wondering what he has to do to stop Gaston on that run. It's been a great tenure for Ken Hatfield though. He's in his fifth year as the head man at the Air Force Academy. And he's sending the team to a bowl for a second year in a row. You see the chains being brought in from all the way across the field. The umpire, Jim Godfrey, will handle the forward stake. And the it's measurement reveals, what do you think? It's close enough. Inches. Just short. Jack Baker indicates just short. And so it'll set up a third and uh, much, much less than one for San Diego State with 11-19 to go in the first half and uh, the Falcons leading 14-7. Now, I think this would be a great play for the San Diego Aztecs to try a pass play on this because normally everyone tries to go up the middle to pick up those few inches. Coaching both teams tonight, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark McKay giving the play to his Aztec offensive teammates. We'll see if they're thinking on the same page you are. We'll find out. Okay. Vince Warren goes wide to the left, number one. And Jim Zandusky is wide to the right. The backs are setting up in an high formation. And they only have single coverage on Sandusky. I'll bet McKay keeps it. Long count. Now we're both wrong. But it's a first down for the Aztecs as Chris Funk steps up to make the tackle on fullback Mike Waters. That was very unusual. He had Mike Sandusky wide out to the left side and he was only single covered. Watch Chris Funk, number 96, make the tackle. He fought off a block here. Chris Funk going head-to-head -head with Andre Paredes, the right guard, who's 240 pounds, and Funk only 228, but he was equally as strong on that play and made a good tackle. And Chris Funk is one of the strongest men on the Air Force Academy team. First down for the Aztecs at their own 45-yard line. That's Matt Long, the all-whack center over the ball. Waters, the fullback, wrestled down after a gain to the 47 of two yards. And getting up off the bottom of the pile is... Uh, Chris Funk among the tacklers. You see the clock running down. Sean Smith also went on the last play. The game clock at the bottom left of your screen. Ten and a half minutes to go in the half. Air Force up by a touchdown, and that's the cause for concern on the San Diego State sideline. We see here. And as you know, the center, Matt Long, for San Diego State, was an all-whack first team on offense. He's a good one. A senior out of Ventura, California, considered the best center in Aztec history. Dan Gaston tries the left side running behind Waters. 
And Gaston makes good moves to the Air Force 40-yard line before he's finally pinned by Charlie Heath, the defensive end, who went into the game with 65 tackles. Heath had to grab him from behind. We'll see Gaston on the move again here. McKay handing off to Gaston. Now off the left side, he stops, makes a little fake, cuts back to the center of the field. Charlie Heath is there that makes a stop for the Falcons. You know, John, we've seen five turnovers in less than a half of play, three by Air Force, two by San Diego State, but we've also seen a lot of offense. Both these teams have shown they can move the ball so far. Both teams have moved the ball very well. Despite the rainy conditions in a very soggy field, Sandusky was the man in motion. Gaston is the man with the football. And Sean Smith and Carl Jedney knock him out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 40-yard line. That would be a gain of only one. Jeff Speck, the tight end, will deliver the play from Doug Scoville, who serves as his own offensive coordinator, former quarterback coach at Brigham Young, former head coach at Pacific. The second down, nine yards to go for the Aztecs. Pass play coming in. Well, we'll see here, John. You're 0 for 1 now. I got to make up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, if you call the plays as well as you pick those football games, you'll be doing all right. <laughs> who told you about that? <laughs> That's Mike McKay heading for the sideline for a word with Doug Scoville as the Aztecs call a timeout with his score, the Falcons 14, the Aztecs 7. John Owens and I will be back from San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium right after these messages. Fall at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium where Air Force leads San Diego State 14 to 7 with 9.40 to go in the half. And later tonight, stay tuned to KKTV for the latest update of the day's events on the new Center 11 update with Kelly McHenry, Paul Pack with weather, and Jed Jackson with today's sports scores and a wrap-up of tonight's game. That's all on new Center 11 update at 10 p.m. here on KKTV. On second and nine, from the 40-yard line, Martin McKay under pressure has his pass intercepted Picked by off. Tom Stanbury. Stanbury finally knocked down at the Air Force 30-yard line after picking up his second interception of the season. And that's the third turnover against San Diego State. We'll see it again here. And here goes McKay back. He has time. It was second and nine at this point. He has a lot of time to throw the ball over the middle. It is picked off by Stanbury. Stanbury makes a few yards on the game in the Air Force Academy right back in action again. Second interception of the night for the Academy, John. So the Air Force Academy has now set a school record for most interceptions in a single season. Tom Stanbury gets congratulations on the 23rd interception by a Falcon in 1983. And there you see Stanbury. Tom being congratulated by his teammates. First down Air Force at their own 29-yard line. Marty Louthan. Kenny Moore, the strong side safety, a great wide receiver prospect in high school. Lothan showing that running ability once again, though. And running to the left, that's a good sign. Maybe his shoulder that it's bothered him uh, is beginning to heal. Watch it from field level here. Okay, now we have a low angle on him. Marty Lothan get, faking the pitch out. Never can tell when Marty is going to throw the ball. He sees the man is covered who he's going to pitch to. He holds on to the ball and makes a nice gain. A gain of nine, so it's second and one for the Falcons. And the fullback looks like Sunquist has the first down at the 41-yard line, tackled by Herb Braun, number 46, and uh, Sean McNanny, number 47. Scott Wackenheim, an all-whack selection through the key block. Wackenheim, a senior, has three letters, and he'll get his fourth from the Air Force Academy for his fine work this season as we look at Ken Hatfield and the Air Force Brain Trust. And the second half of the Bruce Brothers, Sunquist. Talking about the great depth of fullback earlier in the ball. They have it especially a big plus for a team that runs a variation of the wishbone. From their own 42-yard line, Air Force on the move. Marty Laufen pitches the ball to Mike Brown, and he doesn't get anywhere. Loses a couple of yards as Herb Braun, number 46, and Clarence Nunn, number 27, step up to help Trent Collins make the tackle. The defensive backs on the San Diego State Ball Club are coming up very quickly to force the run, as we'll see as we watch the play again from field level. Now, San Diego State had this diagnosed perfectly. Lothan running out of room, running out of turf, decides to pitch out to Mike Brown. He goes nowhere. In fact, he lost a yard on the play. Well, actually, they put it down at the 42. They gained a yard on the play, and uh, here's a look at the Air Force team laying out on second and nine with Kirby wide to the left. Lothan pitches just before he's hit. And that's Randy Jones with the football, and he's knocked out of bounds near midfield by Trent Collins, the cornerback, and the fastest player on San Diego State's defensive unit. He really whacked Randy Jones, didn't he? And he has to be fast to pick up Randy Jones on the way there. That's Dick Clark, who was injured on a punt play earlier in the ballgame, and you see him heavily wrapped in being helped. 
off the field. You hate to see an injury, and uh, Dick Clark, a very fine defensive player for the Air Force Academy Ball Club and a, a big contributor on special teams, a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, will doubtless see no more action in tonight's encounter. Third and three for the Air Force team, and they work from their own 49-yard line, leading by a touchdown with 8.20 to go in the half. There's the fullback, Ted Sundquist. Sundquist making a couple to the San Diego State 49 before Herb Braun made the tackle, number 46. It would appear he's short of what he needed for the first down, though. Let's watch from field level again, John. Well, it'll be fourth down and one coming up. He did not make the first down, and it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Ken Hatfield comes up with. What would Coach John Owens do here? Well, Coach John Owens would run the ball. Okay. <laughs> see the uh, game time in the second period running off at the bottom left of your screen. All the scoring of the ball game occurred in period number one. Now Air Force is going to call timeout and talk about it, John. You think they'll give me a call? We'll see. <laughs> Timeout on the field, 7.51 to play in the first half with a score Air Force 14, San Diego State 7. We'll be back with more right after these messages. Air Force leads San Diego State 14 to 7, 7.51 to go in the half. Bob Foss Motors, Kilo Radio, Pizza Hut, and Arthur's Limousines are some of the many local businesses in Colorado Springs and Pueblo who have made this telecast possible through their advertising support. Let them know that you're pleased to have the game at home on Channel 11. There he goes. First down and more. Big play on fourth and one as John Kirshner, the All-Western Athletic Conference fullback, is finally dragged down by Torin Nixon at the San Diego State 18-yard line. They what went for play. the gamble, and didn't it work? Absolutely, it worked. Easy to see why John Kirshner made the All-Wack team for the second year in a row. He went into the game the number 37 rusher in the country, and he's heading to the sideline for a rest. After that big gain is the all-time leading rusher in Air Force history with 2,582 yards. And that's why he's also headed to the Hula and Japan Bowl. First down Air Force at the San Diego State 18-yard line. Ted Sundquist moves to about the 13-yard line. Her lawn, number 46 among the tacklers, along with the Darrell Brown, number 40 for San Diego State. Moves the ball to the 14-yard line, second and six for Air Force. And, you know, John Kirshner is going to those two-season bowl games after the season's all over, of course. One is to the Hula Bowl and the other the Japan Bowl. Great way to camp what's been a great college football career for him. He's had a fabulous career. And, as we noted, he's written his name in the Air Force all-time record book as well. Second and a little better than five yards to go for Air Force from the 13-yard line. And this is the fullback Sunquest into the end zone with his Touchdown. second TD of the night. Air Force leads it. By a score of 20 to 7 with a point after upcoming. And Sunquist has his fourth TD of the year. Great offensive line surge, John, as we'll see here by Wyken, Butrell, Oberdick, and Melcher. And Ted Sunquist at 202 pounds just shows why he's so explosive when you take out a John Kirshner. You never lose anything with a Ted Sunquist in there. What a battering pair of fullbacks. So for the second time in the ball game, John, Air Force parlays a San Diego State turnover into a touchdown. Earlier in the game, uh, Carl Jedney intercepted a pass, and Air Force was able to score. And after another pass interception, they've scored again. Sean Pavlich adds the point after touchdown and becomes the all-time Air Force Academy leading scorer. 6.44 to go in the first half, and the score now, Air Force 21 and San Diego State 7. Suddenly, John, the momentum is back on the Air Force Academy sideline, isn't it? Well, the San Diego Aztecs had a couple of shots at it. They had a chance to change the momentum of this ball game. However, they have not been able to do so. Turnovers, their major problems all year long, have come back to haunt them. They have three tonight, 31 on the season. Air Force football is a special exclusive of KKTV Channel 11 and is made possible by the support of many fine Colorado Springs advertisers like Nautilus Fitness Centers. Captain's Magnavox, Cheyenne Mountain Liquors, and the Falcon Inn. Along with John Owens, I'm Pete Solomon at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium, where Ted Sundquist, number 38, has just scored his second touchdown of the night, fourth of the season, to give the Falcons a 21-7 advantage. And the Falcons at this point, a very cheerful team out there, having a 14-point lead. I think it's less rainy on their sideline than it is across the way. <laughs> I would doubt that. However, uh, the Falcons are a very disciplined ball club. And Pavlich, as you noted, uh, headed for the Japan Bowl and also the East-West Shrine game for postseason activities. 
Air Force able to go 71 yards on the last drive, capped off by Ted Sundquist's 14-yard run, and that's Carlos Mateos about to kick off for the Falcons. And he drives the ball down the sideline and out of bounds, so they'll back him up to the 35 and he'll try it again. Now, Carlos has a strong leg. He'll probably kick it again this time, but Sandusky may have a shot at running it back, and Sandusky is one of the best return men in the country. In fact, if he had enough kickoff returns, he would be number one in that category. He went into the game averaging almost 33 yards of return, but uh, it takes a minimum number of returns to be listed on the NCAA index in that category, and he's come up a little short. That's right, and Sandusky has now moved up to the 10-yard line. That's Carlos Mateos, who's uh, no stranger to Colorado Springs. He grew up there. His dad was on the Air Force athletics staff. He's in his second year as the Air Force kickoff specialist, Jim Sandusky at the top of your screen, and Dan Gaston at the bottom are waiting for the kickoff. I think they'll try to keep the ball away from Sandusky this time around? I would. <laughs> Chris Hardy, number 34, is the man at the bottom of your screen. Sandusky at the top waiting for Mateos' kickoff, graduate of Doherty High School in Colorado Springs. And, of course, I'm sure that Mateos wants to keep it over there toward Hardy's side of the field. Sandusky is just such a dangerous breakaway runner. Interestingly enough, Air Force has been able to build their 21-7 lead, throwing only one pass in the first half. They're 0 for 1. That pass was picked off. That's right. Carlos Mateos kicks off for Air Force. A squib kick. It's going to be tough to handle. And it's picked up by Chris Hardy. He fakes the reverse. And Hardy still breaks a tackle and finally is wrestled down at the 38-yard line and a flag is dropped. Tom Rotello and Dwan Wilson were down to make the tackle on Hardy, number 34, and a flag was dropped across the way and a face mask indicated against Air Force. So I'll tack on Moriarty after a very fine return. Well, that's a big break for the San Diego Aztecs as they tried a, a fake reverse. And, of course, you always have to go for the fake with Sandusky back there. Here's the penalty. Grabbing the face mask, five yards on the defense, first That's down. That's the misdemeanor, just a five-yard penalty, but we'll see it again here from Here's the replay. Hardy with the ball, fakes it off to Sandusky. Air Force goes for the fake, picks up some good yardage for Hardy along with a 15-yard penalty attack on the play. Tom Rotello accidentally grabbed the face mask. That's why it was only a five-yard penalty. He didn't throw him down by the face mask, which would have wound up in a 15-yard penalty. Pass is complete to Mike Waters, the fullback, and he's thrown for a loss as A.J. Scott, the Falcon, or free safety, came up to force the play beautifully. Scott, an outstanding athlete, aided by Dwan Wilson on the tackle. The ball spotted back at the 40, a loss of two. And Scott and Wilson both snuffed out that play in a hurry. Second down and better than 12 yards to go for San Diego State. A little bit more than six minutes to play in the second uh, period of play. Falcons were leading 14 to 7 at the end of the quarter, and they lead 21 to 7 at the moment. McKay has plenty of time, and he finds Dan Gaston tackled by Carl Jedney and Tom Stanberry, a pair of linebackers at the 46-yard line. It'll set up a third down and about six to go. Well, it looked like McKay wanted to go deep his favorite receiver, Sandusky. He was covered, so he just dumped it off to Gaston. You see the time running down in the second period of play. Third and about six upcoming for San Diego State. You know, the Aztecs are doing a very good job of protecting Mark McKay, though. Going into the ball game, he had been sacked 43 times. He and Jim Plum, the other quarterback, had been sacked a total of 43 times. Can't throw in the line in the back. McKay with time again. Has to dish the ball out to Waters, the fullback, and he's hit very hard, well short of what he needed for the first down. Charlie Heath and Chris Funk were there to make the tackle. Heath, the senior from Houston. Funk, the junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and A.J. Scott coming up from his secondary spot again. That's Sean McNanny, defensive end on the San Diego State bench. Well, the Air Force turned that play away real quick. He wanted to throw over the middle. That was covered, and he went out to Waters that time. Only a two-yard game, so it's fourth down and four, and Mike Saxon is on to do the punting for the Aztecs. Steve Bullington will snap the ball, and Mike Kirby is the deep man for Air Force. Fine punt. Kirby takes it at his own 11-yard line and moves to the 18, maybe the 19-yard line before he's finally upended there. 
In on the tackle for San Diego State, number 94, Dwayne Pettit. He's a backup defensive end. And so Air Force will go back to work on offense, and they've done a pretty good job of controlling the football, particularly in the second quarter, don't you think? Well, the Air Force has controlled the football. San Diego State had their breaks earlier in the ball game. It seems like now the Air Force offense is starting to take over. Air Force doesn't need any breaks with that flexible because it's so hard to stop, and you cannot stop their scoring attack. Only thing that stopped Air Force so far, three turnovers, and three turnovers have been critical for San Diego State in the first half as well. Maybe a testimony to the bad weather and poor field conditions in San Diego. Marty Louthen pitches just as he's hit by Braun, and Mike Brown avoids a tackle from Kenny Moore, and on great individual effort moves to the 23-yard line. He picked up four yards virtually by himself. Tom Rulon finally made the tackle. San Diego State had that play covered all the way. However, Mike Brown squirmed just a little bit, and he made about four yards on the play. So second and six upcoming is Doug Scoville and uh, members of his staff make notes on the sidelines. It's been a long year for that man. That's Tom Coleman delivering a play for the Air Force Academy. He caught a TD pass against San Diego State last year. Coming wide is Kirby. On second down and six. Lauthan keeps the ball and moves to the 27-yard line before Tom Rulin, number 58, makes the tackle with a little help from Sean McNanny, number 77, who was a doubtful starter because of an injury going into the ball game. Ken Hatfield in the center of your picture, exhorting the Air Force ball club as they're facing the third down. Third down and three. Just over three minutes to play in the first half. Air Force leading by a score of 21 to 7. Mike Brown has a five-yard TD run tonight, and Ted Sundquist has TD runs of two and 14 yards in the ball game. San Diego State's score came on a 30-yard pass from Mark McKay to Jim Sandusky. Marty Laufen has the first. Laufen knocked down at the 36-yard line by Herb Braun, number 46, the junior from Anaheim, California, who is playing inside linebacker tonight, although he's also played outside linebacker for the Aztecs. A good look at Braun here. With 10 more yards for Marty Lawton, and we'll see how he does it here. Marty Lawton on a flex bone, fakes a handoff inside to John Kirshner, decides to keep the ball, and he runs for a first down. Seven first downs for the Air Force tonight, and six of them have come via the ground. They've only thrown one pass, one didn't connect. Jeff Huff is in the lineup as we look at Marty Lawton. Lauthan running out of time. The pass is tipped and incomplete. Huff was the intended receiver. Clarence Nunn was in the neighborhood, number 27, and so was Trent Collins, number 22. Marty threw in the traffic that time. We'll see it again here, John. Marty Lauthan faking another handoff. Fades back to pass. It's only his second pass attempt of the night. His first one was picked off. This will be incomplete, but he threw into heavy traffic and should have been picked off by the Aztecs. Watch Dwayne Pettit, number 94. He put a lot of pressure on Marty. He sure did. Herb Braun, number 46, tipped the ball, and then uh, Jeff Huff couldn't collect it. And, of course, there's no pass interference on the ball that's tipped. So, no, uh, free game. That's, it, that's right. So the collision there means nothing as far as the potential penalty is concerned. Laufen wants to try his arm again, and this time he's on target at the 49-yard line. Mike Kirby makes the catch, and he's hit almost immediately by Torin Nixon, but Kirby comes up with his 37th reception of the season, and, of course, Mike is going to wind up as the Falcons' number two all-time receiver. The Falcons get in deep trouble. They look for Kirby. He found 12 yards on that play, and uh, the Falcons have the ball at their own 48-yard line as Jeff Huff delivers the play, and Air Force will operate without a tight end on this particular snap of the ball. Jerry Rose is headed for the sideline. And we're almost down to two minutes of play in the first half. Huff is left and Kirby is right, but this is a running play to the fullback Kirshner, and he's in San Diego State territory at the 47-yard line. Herb Vaughn making the tackle on it, number 46. That's a name we've called a lot in the first half. Vaughn's played well for the Aztecs. Very well for the Aztecs all year long. So the ball spotted in the neighborhood of the 47-yard line in San Diego State territory. And it'll be second and five for Air Force with about a minute and a half to go in the half, and the Falcons up by two TD. They're not quite in range yet for Sean Patton. Lauthan pitches the ball out, and Mike Brown has the first down and more. Knocked out of bounds by Trent Collins, the cornerback. Look at how soggy the sidelines are. 
Another first down for Air Force, and the Falcons want to operate without a huddle, although the clock stopped when he moved out of bounds, and the clock also stops as they advance the chains. And a minute and 18 left for the half. If you're wondering how long Sean Pavlich's longest field goal of the season is, it's 43 yards, but of course he booted a 57-yarder last year, so the field goal could come into play if Air Force can't punch it in in this final 118. They're within Sean's range at this moment. They have a first down at the San Diego State 37-yard line. And Kirby is wide to the left. Not throwing his way. And he has Kirby at the 25-yard line for another Air Force first down. Kirby made the catch in front of Kenny Moore, the strong safety. It's interesting, John, that Air Force hadn't been throwing the ball at all, but watch how accurately Lothan is throwing here late in the second quarter. And Moore gave Kirby an awful lot of room. And Mike operated underneath Moore that time for the pick for the catch. First down, Air Force. Just outside the San Diego State 24-yard line, just over a minute to play in half number one. But you have to respect the speed of Kirby. That's why I'm more laid off of it. That's the fullback, Kirshner, inside the 20 to the 18-yard line and still driving before Herb Vaughn can finally pin him to the soggy turf. At about the 18, a gain of six on first down. And now Air Force is going to spend a timeout with 49 seconds to play in the half. Did you say Braun again on the tackle? Braun again. John Kirshner working in the backfield with Jody Simmons, number 25, and we take a look at Ken Hatfield talking things over with his quarterback, Marty Lawson. Lawson's had a fine first half, hasn't he? He sure has, and Kenny would like to tack on another six points before they go to the dressing room at halftime, scoring out 21 to 7 in favor of the Air Force Academy. With all the problems San Diego State has had this season, with the quality of their passing attack, McKay has enjoyed some success as a quarterback, and we've talked all first half long about what a fine year Jim Sandusky has had. You know, you just can't get enough of a lead against a team like San Diego State, a team with quick strike capabilities. Absolutely. That's why Ken would like to tack on six more. And when they come back to the second half, force McKay into throwing the ball more, and of course the Falcons will be ready for that play. Air Force has moved from their own 19-yard line to the San Diego State 17, where when play is resumed, there'll be 49 seconds to play in the first half. The Falcons will have a second and three, and they're trying to build on a two-touchdown lead. Ken Hatfield sends Marty Louthan back into the offensive huddle. And they're well within the range of Pavley to be needing. Don Oberdick comes out over the ball at center. He's completing a fine junior season. Alton keeps the football, moves to the 12-yard line, and then Tom Rulon, number 58, with help from Trent Collins. Looking down Marty Lawton. Clock stops with 44 seconds to play. There you see the clock at the lower left of your screen. First down, Air Force. They have the ball at San Diego State's 11-yard line, and this has been a fine drive. First time all game that Air Force has utilized not only the run but the pass marching down the field. And the Falcons want to hurry up with this play. Kirshner, the fullback, and he's down to the 6-yard line before Herb Braun, number 46, makes the tackle again. Gaining five yards on first down is a real advantage. Now it'll be second and five. Just half a minute to play in the half, and San Diego State calls a timeout. That's sort of strange, isn't it? That's very unusual. With the clock running down with 30 seconds to go in the first half, and San Diego State wants to call a timeout. That's John Kirshner taking a, a breath after being one of the big reasons why Air Force has been able to move the ball down the field successfully from their own 19 now, to the San Diego State 6. Now this will give Coach Ken Hatfield and his staff a chance to See what kind of offensive attack they want to put up against the defense this time. John, this telecast is a total community effort and is only possible because of the Colorado Springs advertising community lending their support. Advertisers like Custom Tire Center, Macaulay Olds Honda, Academy Computers, and Florida Gardens. Be sure and tell them you appreciate seeing the game. You know, at the halftime activities, of course, we're going to have General Scott, the superintendent of the Air Force Academy. He will be talking to us at halftime. And at the moment, Marty Laufman is talking with Ken Hatfield as the two try to put their heads together and see if they can punch one in from six yards away with 30 seconds to play in the half. What are you looking for here? Uh, that was, well, first of all, it was a very strange timeout for the San Diego Aztecs. Why stop the clock and give Marty Laufman and the team a chance to regroup and decide on what they want to do? Strange timeout indeed. Now, are you looking for the option play here because that's what Air Force does best? Oh, yes. Option play of the pitch out to Mike Brown around the right side. I hope I'm right. <laughs> 
Well, we'll see as uh, Don Oberdick, the center, moves out over the ball and Air Force lines up in their familiar flex bone formation. You see the clock at the bottom right. Kirshner hit at the line of scrimmage, forges forward to the four-yard line with 24 seconds and counting down to go in the half. He was hit hard by Tom Rulon, number 58. And you see the clock being allowed to run as Air Force will work without a huddle. I was a little off on that play. A little bit. I didn't want to remind you. Good defense on the part of Trent Collins as Kirshner can't get going. Eight seconds to go in the half, and Air Force decides to spend their final time out. Marty Lothan heads for the sidelines, and maybe Sean Pavlich will be asked to add three points in this situation. And, and he will be. So the line of scrimmage, the four-yard line. Sean Pavlich will get an opportunity to add to his record as the all-time leading scorer at the Academy. And, of course, three is better than none when you come away at halftime. Marty Lothan with another fine first half of play. Air Force is 19 and 9 in the two and a half years or so that he's been the quarterback of record. Sean Pavlich on the field to attempt a field goal. Don't forget at halftime, New Center 11 will have a special halftime report. So he'll be updated on all the activities. And, and of we'll course, things here. And of course, once again, New Center 11 is proud to bring you the first live local telecast of an Air Force Academy away football game. From 22 yards away, Sean Pavlich out of the hold of Greg Zolniger. And chalk up three. And he bangs home a 22-yard field goal with four seconds to go in the first half, and Air Force builds their lead to 24 to 7. Pavlich, the senior out of Prescott, Arizona, almost automatic, isn't it? Automatic when Pavlich takes the field. So Air Force marched from their own 19 down to the San Diego State four and then asked Sean Pavlich to add three more. San Diego State is going to have to regroup at halftime to see if they come back with the attack like they had when they scored their seven points. When they started their drive, they were throwing shots over the middle to their tight ends and they were trying to stay away from Sandusky. And they also had some great runs by Gaston. In this situation, though, you have to believe that if they do get an opportunity to run a play from scrimmage, the Air Force defensive backs will be very deep to try to avoid giving up the, the long ball. And they have been double teaming Sandusky all evening, so you know what they're going to do to him in the second half. Clock starts when the ball touches the player inbounds. Are you looking for Mateos to try to drive the ball to the end zone, or are you looking for a squib kick that would be tough for San Diego State to handle in return? I would say a squib kick with four seconds on the clock. What's my average anyway tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not counting. <laughs> Chris Hardy, number 34, Jim Sandusky, number 7, are the deep men, and they're going to wait until Mateos approaches the ball before they align themselves so that uh, Mateos cannot kick the ball away from Sandusky. This is a squib kick. Boxed around up front. And taken by one of the up men. I think that's the tight end. Uh, Mike Wells, who handled the kick as the first half concludes. So Air Force, after leading 14 to 7 at the end of the quarter, adds 10 points in quarter number two. And the Falcons, in quest of their ninth victory of 1983, fifth in the conference, rated 17th in the Associated Press poll this week, leading 24 to 7 at intermission. Anything surprise you in the first half? Not a thing, really. Uh, the only thing that really surprised me was Air Force has not thrown the ball that much tonight. They haven't had to. Their rushing attack, second in the nation once again, only behind mighty Nebraska. All they have to do is continue their running attack. On the other hand, San Diego has to get their passing attack together if they want to get back into this ball game. They have been handing off to their backs, their fullbacks, and their halfbacks, but they need the big play. And Sandusky being double teamed, that is a major uh, factor against the San Diego Aztecs. They'll have to go elsewhere for a passing attack. The rain has begun to let up a bit. The Air Force Academy Band is getting ready to entertain the small crowd at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. We'll have a visit with uh, General, Scott. General Scott. We will have a new Center 11, new Center 11 update coming up later at halftime, and we'll have our halftime activities with a score. Air Force 24 and San Diego State 7 right after these messages. Trying to get things back together here as we get the second half <laughs> underway. Along with John Owens, I'm Pete Solomon at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium where San Diego State will begin the second half back at their own 19-yard line. And, uh, John, I think you'll agree the first half stats were revealing, particularly in the total yard category. Air Force. All the way. Air Force uh, 296 to 168, although only 24 of those yards came via the air. And we're going to see if McKay starts out with these short passing attack once again. 
Well, he's going to try a draw on the first play from scrimmage, and Mike Waters, the Ooh. fullback, breaks a couple of tackles, and finally Carl Jedney knocks him down at the 33-yard line after a 13-yard game in the San Diego State first down. Watch the blocking here for fullback Mike Waters. Waters adds good blocking as he goes up the middle, veers left, and he cuts back to his right, straight up the middle, and he's stopped by Jedney. Jedney has been on a lot of tackles tonight, as far as the academy is concerned. You're right, he's been a busy man. Chuck Peterson aided on the last tackle. Now it's first down for San Diego State at their own 33-yard line. Mark McKay gives the ball to Dan Gaston running behind Waters, and Gaston breaks around the corner, and he's finally dragged down from behind by Dwan Wilson, number 24, the sophomore out of Wynn, Arkansas. Now on the replay, it's obviously you see McKay giving off to Gaston. Something must have happened at halftime because they're starting to run at the Air Force Academy. And he stopped by Dwan Wilson after a big gain. Another first down for the San Diego Aztecs. 11 yards on that one by Gaston. And they have the ball at uh, the Air Force 44-yard line. A 46-yard line. Gaston goes in motion. The only setback is Waters, the fullback, and he has the football. Mike Waters breaks a couple of tackles. Got a good block from the umpire and finally got knocked down by Tom Stanbury at the 38-yard line. Tonight's game between Air Force and San Diego State University is brought to you by Buck Stoves and the Air Force Academy, our number one in the nation, by the Colorado Springs Sun, and by the First National Bank of Colorado Springs. Well, the Aztecs have done some uh, changing at halftime in their offensive lineup. And on second and one, Mike Waters gets another first down. He's tackled by Steve Kelly, number 50, and Mike Chandler, number 60. But not before he picks up a, a first down at the Air Force 34-yard line. They began the sequence, San Diego State did, back at their own 19. This is one of the best-looking drives the San Diego Aztecs have had all night long. Even though they have seven points on the scoreboard, this is one of the better-looking drives. Their seven points came as a result of an 80-yard drive in the first period. Nine play march, capped by a 30-yard pass from Mark McKay to Jim Sandusky. Now on first down from the Air Force 34, Dan Gaston carries the football, and he has his legs ripped out from under him by Greg Zoninger, the safety man, who's also played cornerback. He was the JV quarterback as a freshman, very versatile athlete. Chris Funk was also there to help out on the play. And to pick up a three yards on the play, making it second and seven for the Aztecs. They have the ball on the Falcon 31-yard line talking about the possibility of changes by San Diego State in the second half. It looks like they're willing to go out and slug it out with the Air Force on the ground, uh, having a, a man advantage as far as weight is concerned. Right, and they're ramming it right at the Air Force defense right now. Another running play, Mike Waters, the fullback, but he's stopped by Carl Jedney at the 30-yard line after a game of only one. I don't know how many tackles Jedney has been in on, but I'll tell you, he's been tremendous out there on defense for the Falcons tonight. Sets up a third down and six situation for the Aztecs. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the third period. Air Force leading 24 to 7. The line of scrimmage is the Air Force 29. Tom Stanberry is reading the defensive alignments. The defenses are called by Fred Goldsmith, the coordinator. Stanberry reads signals as we look at Carl Jedden lining up at his outside linebacking spot. Gaston moves into a wing. The only setback is Mike Waters. Waters has the ball on third and five, and he's going to come up well short. Chris Funk and Sean Smith just ride him backwards. All of a sudden, the Air Force defense stiffens against the run. Well, Funk and Smith, they snuffed that play out real quick, and it's surprising to me they didn't try a pass over the middle. Sure is easy to quarterback from up here, though, isn't it? Absolutely, and it's fourth down and four yards to go, and it looks like they're going for it. Well, behind by 24 to seven, trying to climb back into the ball game. Zandusky is wide to the right. Warren at the top of your screen, number one to the left. Big play for San Diego. There at the Air Force 28. Fourth down and four. McKay with time to throw. Almost intercepted. It is intercepted. No, incomplete. Incomplete. Tom Huggins, the senior from San Antonio, dove to try to catch the pass and just barely missed. And the Air Force will take over on downs. McKay had time. He threw right over the middle, which is the play we thought perhaps he would try earlier. On the third down, it was behind the back. Jeff Speck, the tight end, couldn't hold on. And 
Almost, but not quite for Tom Huggins as he dove to try to pick the ball up off the wet turf. So the Air Force will take over first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Good defensive stand, though. Uh, San Diego State was moving down the field via the run, and the defense stiffened, and the Falcons stopped them on down. Marty Laufen to the 31-yard line for a gain of three, dragged down by Trent Collins. Collins is the safety man for San Diego State. Well, San Diego State had a good drive going for them until they could convert the fourth down and four yards to go effort, so that might have pulled a little bit out of their sails to start off this third quarter. So you think now momentum is on the side of the Air Force Academy? Huh? Well, if the Air Force can take this down there and punch it in for either a touchdown or a field goal, it will deflate them just a little bit, the Aztecs, that is. As a runner, Marty Laufman has carried the ball nine times for 64 yards. He's a great weapon. Went into the game number five in the country in scoring. And Laufen gives the ball to the fullback, John Kirshner. And Kirshner forges forward past the 35 to about the 36-yard line before he's finally pinned. Tom Rulon, number 58, was the man that made the initial contact. And the Falcons will have third and three. 10-42 and counting down in the third quarter. Air Force leading 24-7. They led 14-7 at the end of the first period and did all the scoring in the second quarter. And the Aztecs are going to have to come up with a big play if they want to get back into this ball game quickly. Of course, they have to stop the flex bone attack. That's the fullback, Kirshner. Uh, oh, oh, oh. There he goes. It is Kirshner, and Kirshner goes got all the way angle down on the field to the 13-yard line. John Kirshner dragged down by Torin Nixon. But not before he sets up uh, Air Force with a first down. And as you see, he's very slow to get up. Let's watch how the play develops here. Marty Laufen, a beautiful fake, gives it to him this time. Big John bulls right through the middle, breaking away from tacklers. And John Kirshner on his way to a big game for the Air Force Academy Falcons. But John now is down on the field. Kirshner finally dragged down. Let's see where he... See the hand at the back of the neck there. Maybe pulled his neck a little bit. Good look at John Kirshner, two-time All-Western Athletic Conference fullback. And a big fullback for the Falcons. They really need him. Now John's Kirshner up now. A little bit. Here's the end of the play. Well, here's Kirshner walking off the field. John is up with me just a little bit, but you can believe he'll be back. He's a tough guy. He sure is. John Kirshner went into the game number 37 in the country in Russia. First half statistics were very revealing. Possession time was fairly even, but in total offense, the Air Force had a clear-cut advantage. 296 yards to 168, the Falcons' favor. And the Falcons have the ball on the San Diego State 13-yard line. Marty Lawson gives the ball to Ted Sunquist, and Sunquist picks up two yards to the 11 before Tom Rulon knocks him down. Jerseys are getting muddier. The numbers are getting a little tougher to pick up. Now, in that first half, you know, the Air Force Academy Falcons, with a score of 24-7, to 7, they had 13 first downs, and San Diego State had 10, so they're fairly even in that. However, the big yardage, of course, is gained by the Falcons in total offense. See Kirshner making a pit stop on the sideline and getting some attention. Meantime, Ted Sunquist is in the lineup at the fullback spot as the Falcons have a second down eight from the San Diego State 11-yard line. Come on, defense! Marty Laufen violates the 25-second clock. Maybe he was changing the play at the line of scrimmage, and that'll back the ball up to the 16-yard line, where it will be second down and 13. Air Force hasn't had many penalties. Well, it looked, like, it, it looked like Marty was trying to change a play. Something he saw in the San Diego defense he didn't like. Head ball, delay of game, offense. Delay of game is the call. The line of scrimmage is now the 13-yard line. For all of you who have just tuned in to watch the CBS Saturday movie, Due to our telecast live from San Diego of tonight's game, quarterback princess starring Helen Hunt as the first female football player will be shown later this evening at 10.30 following the new Center 11 update with Kelly McHenry, Paul Pack, and Jed Jackson here on 11. Lawson throws, incomplete intended for Mike Kirby, and Lawson was getting good pressure from the San Diego State defense there, wasn't he? He sure was. It looks like he's going to try to fish out Kirby out of that stack, but the Kirby is being closely guarded. They know what kind of a dangerous receiver he is. So it's third down and 13 for the Air Force Academy with the ball on the San Diego State 16-yard line. And Ken Hatfield will send Tom Coleman, number 92, in with the next play. Less, well, just nine minutes exactly to play in the third period. And Air Force leading 24-7. to 
It's hard to see. Well, they're going wide to the right again. Both of two men, one right, one right, right and one left. In fact, they break the ball. And the only setback is the fullback, Sunquist. Louthen keeps the ball on a draw play, and Marty Louthen <laughs> rolls into the end zone for an Air Force touchdown. He's done that so many times this year. It's his 16th TD of the season. He was number five in the country in scoring going into tonight's game, and he adds six more to give the Falcons a 30 to 7 lead. And one after upcoming. We'll see and when here. you expect Marty to pass the ball, he crosses up the defense once again this time. Marty Louthen back to pass, faked him out, and he scores a touchdown in the Air Force Academy. Falcons on top right now, 30-7, to the extra point conversion coming up. So on their first drive of the second half, Air Force Academy goes 72 yards, and now Sean Pavlich is on the field to try to pick up the 31st point. Greg Zolniger will hold, and Derek Brown handles the long snaps for the Falcons. San Diego State offside. The boot is good, and we'll see whether they were drawn off or not. Jack Baker, the man in the white cab, will tell us about the penalty. 8.54 to go in the third quarter. So the point after is good, and with a score. Air Force 31, San Diego State 7. We'll be back with more from San Diego right after these messages. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. They've just seen the Air Force Academy go 72 yards in six plays. A touchdown run by Marty Louthen of 16 yards capping that long drive and Air Force has now built a 31 to 7 lead with 8.54 to go in the third quarter. And you know I think one of the biggest plays in the drive besides a touchdown for Marty Louthen was with the San Diego Aztecs. When they started out the third quarter of play they were down to third and four and they did not convert the third and four or the fourth and four situation. When they decided to run it on third and four, they couldn't make a first down. And fourth and four, the pass was behind the receiver, almost picked off by the Air Force Academy. They got the ball back, and the Academy drove 72 yards for the touchdown, capped off of Marty Louthen. So that third down play was a crucial one, and I thought perhaps they should have passed it, and they didn't. They ran it. They got a good look at Louthen on the sideline. He had three rushing touchdowns against San Diego State last year and ends another one in his final regular season game as the Academy's quarterback tonight. And Marty just crossed up the defense again. Everyone was looking for the pass, but except Marty. The penalty enforced on the kickoff. Carlos Mateos kicks off from the 45-yard line. This is a tough one to handle. Sandusky takes it about a yard deep in his end zone, hesitates just a moment. Now he's in big trouble. Jim Sandusky dragged down at the 15-yard line on a great tackle by Steve Sigler, number 22. So San Diego State already down by 31 to 7. We'll start off with downright right in field position on this drive. And Sandusky did have a hole off the right side. However, it was quickly closed off. Looked like there was a little indecision on Jim's part as he tried to decide whether to take the ball out of the end zone or not. I think Jim wants to run back in one of the biggest plays. Jim has been a great punt returner all year long, and he's trying to do it all by himself, perhaps. He's already had a 97-yard kickoff return in 1983. Mark McKay directs the San Diego State offense, and he fakes the pass, goes to Mike Waters, and he just can't get going as John Ziegler catches him in the backfield and tackles him for a loss of three back at the 12-yard line. Great individual effort by the Falcons' right tackle, sophomore John Ziegler. Watch him here. Well, perhaps Ziegler was in the huddle on that play because as soon as he got the ball, Ziegler was right on top of the man. Plum is not quarterback. Jim Plum, number 19, a red-shirted freshman. He quarterback most of the second half against New Mexico uh, two weeks ago in San Diego State's last game. One of the most heavily recruited quarterback prospects in the San Diego area history. Plum wants to try his arm. Intended for Vince Warren, broken up by Chuck Peterson. That sets up a third down and long yardage situation. Third and 13. We'll see Jim Plum's arm here. Warren was covered. Plum has a strong arm. He airs it out. It hits him right in the numbers. No, it was tipped right there. It was tipped by one of the Air Force Academy Falcons. Looks like Greg Zollinger. Zollinger in on it again. Third and a mile to go. Third and 13 for the Aztecs from their own 12. Air Force leading 31 to 7. 8.06 to play in period number three. And Gaston resets. Number 30 is a running back. And it's Gandusky, number seven in motion. Jim Plum to Mike Waters on the delay, and Waters stopped well short of what he needed for the first down at the 20-yard line. Tackled by Sean Smith, number 36, the left linebacker, a senior from Guthrie, Oklahoma. Well, of course, it's easy to sit up here and call the play, especially when you think a pass 
They should have passed the ball. However, he tried to cross up the Air Force Academy attack. It didn't work, and they have to punt. Falcons will be back on offense. Good play by Smith dragging down Waters there. Mike Saxon is the punter for the Aztecs. He'll take the snap from Steve Bullington. Mike Kirby deep for the Falcons. This is another fine punt by Saxon. Kirby, no fair catch. He starts off from his own 37-yard line, and then he's buried by Kenny Moore at about the 38. At the 37-yard line. So Air Force will take over on offense, already leading by a score of 31 to 7, and they'll have fine field position as they go back to work. Well, the Falcons will take over on the 39-yard line, and of course, we're still in the third period, 7:22 to go. We'll be back with more live from San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium right after these messages. Air Force leads San Diego State 31 to 7, and as we look at the Falcon bench, a number of second-level performers are on the field for Air Force, and Bart Weiss, the second-team quarterback, will direct the Air Force attack. Bart Weiss weighs 165 pounds, and he comes from Naples, Florida, and it seems like he's going to take over for Marty Laughlin. Marty's going to get a rest. He's only thrown one pass this season. He's 0 for 1 as a passer. But he's rushed 11 times for 56 yards. He gives the ball off to Joe Arata for a couple of yards from the 39 to the 43. And we do have a flag on the play. Dropped across the way. And uh, sometimes when you have second level people on the field, people with clean jerseys tonight, <laughs> I... People don't always leave at the snap of the ball. Maybe people are a little nervous, and uh, perhaps the, the penalty might be procedure against Air Force. Here's the story from Jack Baker. Go procedure on the offense. It is a five-yard walk-off against the Falcons, who have uh, Greg Evanson in at a line position at left tackle. Jason Rouse at left guard. Dave Sutton is now playing center. Joe Jose is playing the right guard position. And Roger Teague at right tackle. George Manley is getting the chance to play some tight end. Mike Kirby is still in the lineup. He's wide to the right because he's helping to carry in the plays. That's the fullback, Arata, again. And he's tackled from behind. Among the tacklers, Trent Collins and Roger Bender. Well, it's set up with a second down and ten after the penalty. And there's a look at Joe Arata, a junior out of Milwaukee. And, of course, Bart Weiss is the quarterback to come in for Marty Lothan right now. Marty is not hurt. They're just giving him a break. Joe Arata as he lines up at the fullback spot. That's Bart Weiss running the option, and he proves he can run effectively, too, as he moves inside the 45 to the San Diego State 44-yard line before Tom Rulon, who's played a very good game on defense for San Diego State, finally makes the tackle. We'll watch it here from the end zone. Bart Weiss on the fake up the middle, pulls it out of the fullback's stomach, and he keeps the ball, and he rambles around the right side for a good game. Bart Weiss now quarterback for Marty Laughlin. Marty taking a good rest, and of course, perhaps, who knows, we may see the number three quarterback, Brian Knorr, later on tonight. Of course, with Laughlin departing after two and a half years as the starter, Ken Hatfield getting a look at next year. Good yardage to the 38-yard line for Van Cameron, Van Cameron, number 13, the junior out of San Antonio, who was a backup QB last year. It proves he can be an effective runner from the halfback position here, and he moves from the 44 to the 38-yard line, a gain of six. And Von Cameron, a very versatile player. That's why Ken Hatfield uses him in all the positions he can. Jeff Huff moves out wide to the left. George Manley is in a tight end, and he's aligned at the top of your screen. Second down and four. There's a flag down, and uh, it will stop play. Cameron was the ball carrier, but uh, again, we may see a procedure penalty against the Air Force Ball Club, and here's a story from Jack Baker. Five-yard walk-off upcoming against the Falcons. It looked like the interior line of the Air Force all took off at one time. And again, different center, different quarterback. Right. Sometimes the timing isn't quite perfect. Here's the story on the penalty. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense. These folks look pretty lonely here. Huh? <laughs> All by themselves. And of course, no umbrellas up. The rain has stopped right now. Hopefully for the rest of the night. It was pouring. <laughs> Got here today. Though we know it. Line of scrimmage is the Aztec 43-yard line. And after the penalty, it's second and 11 for Air Force. Bart Weiss trying to outrun Thomas Carter, but he can't. Carter catches him at the 42-yard line on a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. So a gain of about one for the sophomore quarterback. See it again here. Watch Thomas Carter, number 55. 
Weiss keeping the ball. Carter comes right across the line, diagnosed it, and pulled him down. Played off those blocks well, didn't he? Very well, very well. Third down nine upcoming for Air Force. They have the ball on the San Diego State 43-yard line with about 4.45 to go in the third period, and Air Force enjoying a 31-7 advantage. Weiss keeps it. And Thomas Carter and Trent Collins knock him down at the 36, short of what he needed for a first down, a gain of about seven yards, and he did not. That cannon is fired every time San Diego State scores a touchdown or field goal, but it's been relatively quiet tonight, John. It's only blasted once after Mark McKay's TD pass to Jim Sandusky. Most of the noise has come from the Air Force Academy tonight. Very quiet tonight. In fact, uh, this past Thursday was very quiet when the San Diego Chargers were whipped. You're right. Fourth down two, and Air Force will go for it from the San Diego State 36-yard line with a big lead. Bart Weiss pitches the ball oh. out, and they're going to come up way short. And the pitch out was to Cameron, I believe. No, it was Jody Simmons, 25, and he was knocked down by Clarence Nunn, number 27. And so San Diego State will take over on downs, but not before we have a timeout here. 3.55 to go in the third period of play. And with a score, Air Force 31, San Diego State 7. John and I will be back with more live from San Diego right after these messages. Andre Paredes, who throws incomplete, a one-hopper to Jim Sandusky. Well, you got to hand it to San Diego State, the last series to play before they took over. Their defense didn't die with the score now, 31-7. Their defense did not die. Plum, just a red-shirted freshman, getting another baptism tonight. He's seen a good deal of action in the last couple of San Diego State games. He was throwing that ball with Larry Nicholas, the nose guard, right in his face. Jim Plum, good size, 6'2", 205 pounds, from nearby La Mesa, California. A 56% passer at Helix High School in the San Diego area. And he wants to put it up again. That's complete to the tight end of Jeff Speck. And Speck is stood up at the 47-yard line by Sean Smith, number 36. And he's short of a first down. We want to remind you about tomorrow's NFL game starting at 11 a.m. It's the Atlanta Falcons meeting the Washington Redskins here on KKTV Channel 11. Also coming up Sunday, January 22nd, it's the big one, Super Bowl 18. The best of the AFC and the best of the NFC going head-to-head -head here on KKTV. Well, you can chalk another one off for me. I said he was short of a first down. The referees overruled me. It's a first down for San Diego. The Aztecs have it at their own 48. And the running play to Waters doesn't get much as Chris Funk jams the play with John Ziegler, number 74, aiding on the tackle. Hey, who'd you pick in tomorrow's game that we'll see on Channel 11? Well, I forgot who the Oracle pick. I was out here for so long, it seems like my brain got watered up a little bit. <laughs> Good dodge. <laughs> Second, <laughs> Second and eight as we look at Ken Hatfield and some of his assistants on the Air Force sideline. Ball just short of midfield. Less than three minutes of play in the third quarter. Air Force leading 31 to 7. And Jim Plum wants to try out his arm again. His pass is a one hopper that lands in front of Dan Gaskin, the running back, with Carl Jedmay in the neighborhood. Well, that'll set up a third down and a long yardage situation. Third and eight from midfield for San Diego State. And tight end Mike Wells carries in a play from the sideline. See the breath coming uh, out of the face mask of Jim Plum. Shows you it is pretty cool here. And uh, look in front of the Air Force bench there, John. It's like a quagmire there. Looks like it's your audio there. <laughs> you feel really well chewed up because of the rain and the activity that had in the stadium in last couple of days. On third and eight, from midfield, Jim Plum is looking long. He's got lots of time. Instead, he goes to Corey Gilmore, his secondary receiver, and Gilmore has stopped short of what he needed for a first down. Kelly and uh, Sean Smith in on the tackle. And John Ziegler was there as well. And it's Gaston 30, not 38, that made the tackle, as Doug Scovel looks on. Well, you know, Pete, uh, you asked me about the ball game on Channel 11 tomorrow. I don't know why you're talking me into this, but I have to, <laughs> I, I'll have to tell you who I'm picking. Atlanta and Washington, upset time. Atlanta to upset Washington. Upset special. <laughs> I hope. The Falcons won a big one last week. They sure did. San Diego State will go for it on fourth and one from the Air Force 43-yard line. The running backs are Gaston and Waters. Jim Plum 
wants to throw for it. Incomplete, the pass was thrown behind Jeff Speck, the tight end, and he was being covered very well. Tom Stanberry was there, number 58, and the Air Force will take over on downs again. Good coverage with Stanberry on the play. So, with the score, Air Force 31, San Diego State 7. We'll be back with more live from San Diego right after these messages. San Diego State trailing Air Force by a score of 31 to 7. The Jock Shop, Art Stewlers, Curtis Mathis, and Wild Ridge Apartments are some of the many local businesses in Colorado Springs and Pueblo who have made this telecast possible. We thank them for their support. Bard Weiss hands the ball off to the fullback. And uh, Jerry Mason picks up a couple to about the 47-yard line, a gain of four on first down, and it is second down and six. This is a good opportunity that Coach Hatfield has taken to look at his second-line players. Because next year they're losing a lot. You know, there was some concern on the part of the Air Force Ball Club going into this week's game, John. Some of the players were slow getting back from Thanksgiving vacation because of the weather, and the coaches thought there might be some problems preparing for the game, but the team appears very well prepared tonight. They are very well prepared. Bart Weiss fumbles uh -oh. the football, and it's recovered by Von Cameron. He was the right in the right place at the right time at the 46-yard line, but they're... We'll look from the end zone again. First down, Air Force. We'll see it again here. Here's an end zone shot. Weiss with the ball. Decides to keep running the ball. However, Vaughn Cameron will be the man on the spot to recover for the Air Force Academy. Could have been a big break for San Diego Aztecs because the Aztecs need a break. There, the ball is snapped free. Vaughn Cameron falls on it. And Daryl Brown fell on him. Cameron bearing down. First down, Air Force. At the 46-yard line of the Aztecs. Weiss again to the 43-yard line. Herb Braun made the tackle. And Weiss tackles in the first half as well. Yeah, that's right, and Bart is carrying the ball an awful lot since he's been in there. Look at Braun, number 46, in the defensive huddle for San Diego State. With these Charger fans. Game was Thursday night, folks. It's over. <laughs> They're hoping for an instant replay with a different result. Different result, indeed. The Raiders came in here on Thursday night and really liked the Chargers. Well, it was a good game for the first quarter. Here, Air Force has built a 31-7 lead. We have less than half a minute to go in the third quarter. Fullback Mason picks up yardage to the 41-yard line before he's finally dragged down by Tom Rulon. Jerry Mason is the fourth fullback employed by Coach Ken Hatfield tonight. That might have been the final play of the third quarter. See the clock winding down. Ball at the 41-yard line, where when play is resumed, it'll be third and five, but the teams will switch ends. That's the end of the third quarter of play with a score. Air Force 31, San Diego State 7. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after these messages. Going into tonight's game, the Air Force Academy was number two in the country in rushing, number five in total offense, number eight in scoring, and the beat goes on. Air Force has built a 31-7 lead as we go to the fourth quarter. And they haven't hurt themselves at all. Coach Ken Hatfield now has given some of the second line players some needed experience for their trip to the Independence Bowl. Along with John Owens, I'm Pete Solomon, live from San Diego where rain has pelted the players, but hasn't slowed down Air Force's rushing attack very much tonight, has it? The only thing that's slowed down has been their passing game and they have not needed it. Bard Weiss is quarterback in the Air Force Ball Club as we begin the fourth period. Air Force has the ball third and six of the San Diego State 42. And the fullback, Jerry Mason, is knocked backwards. We'll see where they give him forward progress close to the 40-yard line. It will be short of what he needed for a first down and set up a fourth down situation for the Falcons. And, of course, we ought to mention once again that Bart Weiss is in a quarterback. Marty Laughlin has just taken a breather. Fourth down upcoming. And Air Force is going to go for it with a big lead. Nothing to lose. Weiss not very big, just six feet, 165 pounds. That's an inch smaller and uh, about 20 pounds lighter than the starting quarterback, Lowthen. He gives the ball to the fullback, and Jerry Mason appears to be short of what he needed for the first down. Tom Rulon made the tackle for San Diego State. Ken Hatfield and the Air Force Academy coaching staff on the sideline. Along with Rulon. 
And it would appear that uh, San Diego State will, well, maybe close enough for a measurement. It will be. They're going to bring the chains across. And Coach Hatfield and staff have to be pleased on what they've seen so far because Thanksgiving holiday back there in Colorado Springs, bad snowstorms. The cadets could not get back to the Air Force Academy in time to have team practices, so they had to make do. So he has to be proud of what they've accomplished so far tonight. The measurement reveals that Air Force does come up short, and so the defensive platoon trots onto the field, and the San Diego State will take over with the football on the Aztec 36-yard line. Another factor going into preparation for tonight's game, in the Air Force's appearance in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana, next week against Ole Miss, the Falcons' fifth bowl appearance, and Coach Hatfield made sure the team was not distracted. Jim Plum. Under some pressure, steps into the pocket and fires, and what oh. a great catch by Vince Warren at the Air Force 44-yard line. That's Warren's 29th catch of the year. This is a man with a 42-inch vertical leap. Now, Jim Sandusky made the catch. Number seven, not number one, and we'll see it again here. Well, Plum has a strong arm for the Aztecs, and he goes back and hits their favorite receiver, Sandusky, on a bullet pass. Sandusky has it, falls to the turf, and, of course, he's down right there. And speaking of the Independence Bowl, like you just said, of course, uh, I'll be traveling with the Air Force team to the Independence Bowl, and we'll have a live report right on Channel 11 next week. You're getting a lot of flight time this month, aren't you? <laughs> so far. First down, Aztecs at the 44. Plum is sacked, and it's the 44th time this season. The San Diego State quarterback has been sacked. Steve Kelly, the nose guard from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is the man that made the sack. We'll see it from the end zone here. And, of course, Plum going back to pass. Where's Kelly? Here he comes into the picture, and Kelly will throw his arm up soon as he puts him on the ground, holding up his hand as a sack with a claw. Steve Kelly. Two fumble recoveries last year. Injuries uh, really prevented him from getting more playing time in 1983, but he's making the most of it with a sack here, moving the ball back to the 47-yard line in Air Force territory. Second down, 13 for the Aztecs. Plum has a lot of time. He rolls and throws, and he's got his man. Great catch at the 40, 39 yard line by Mike Waters, the fullback, and he was hit almost immediately by Charlie Heath playing the defensive end spot. It's interesting though, Sandusky's been relatively quiet except for the long touchdown pass, and the Air Force has done a good job of taking the wide receivers away from San Diego State, don't you think? That's right, and now they know that he has to pass. You know where they got the claw from? No, what's the story on that? A wrestler. Mm -hmm. That's where they picked it up from. The wrestler holds his hand in the claw motion. That's Charlie Heath lining up at his defensive end position on third and five for the Aztecs from the Air Force 39-yard line. Air Force leads it 31 to seven. And Plum has Mike Waters. Mike Waters is the first down, finally dragged down by Tom Rotello inside the 20-yard line at the Air Force 18. Watch Plum collaborate with Mike Waters on this first down pass, John. And Plum, he has a strong arm. He shows that once again, he goes back into the pocket. He has good coverage. And he rifles it right over the center. And Waters has a catch for a good game. The Aztecs are on the move. John, we should touch briefly on the fact that the Air Force Academy players are wearing a claw on their helmets tonight for a different reason. Absolutely. The death of one of their teammates, Brian Fuller. Jim Plum, as the rain begins to intensify again, sends Jim Sandusky in motion. Plum on the quarterback draw play. Dragged down inside the 15-yard line. He lost the handle on the football, but he was down before the fumble occurred. So the advance is from the 18 to about the 13-yard line. Five yards on first down. Second and five. Doug Scoville has just been rehired. He got a new three-year contract. His He's trying to build the program at San Diego State. One of the things he's tried to do is avoid the recruitment of junior college transfers as San Diego State had done for many years. He's trying to build from the freshman class. Yeah, it has to be great being hired for three years with Doug's record this year, 2-8-1. Not much security in that profession. Here's oh, an interception. Off. Look out. Kyle Jedene with his second interception of the night. And Jedney huh. finally down at the San Diego State 35-yard line. That's his fourth of the season. Kyle Jedney, two interceptions tonight and a fumble recovery as well. And Plum never did see him coming. First down Air Force. Let's watch Kyle Jedney here. Plum going back to pass. There's plenty of time. He throws off into the flat. Where's Jedney? There he is. It seems like no San Diego Aztec player was around. And Jedney huffed. Jedney, it is, huffing and puffing his way 
for the Air Force Academy and it's down to the 35-yard line in the first and 10 for the Falcons. 11.04 left to play in the fourth and final quarter. Ken Hatfield goes back to his bench now, John, and asks Brian Knorr to direct the team. Play is resumed. Air Force will have the ball on the San Diego State 35-yard line and we'll be back with more live from San Diego with the Falcons leading 31-7 right after these messages. Carl Jedene, number 49, takes a well-deserved rest on the Air Force bench after picking off his second pass of the night and setting up the Air Force with a first and ten at the San Diego State 35-yard line. What a big night for Carl Jedene. Oh, what a wonderful night he's had. And we do have a new quarterback in, by the way, Brian Knorr for the Falcons. Knorr is a sophomore from Lanaxa, Kansas. He has thrown two passes this season and run the ball eight times. And that one doesn't connect. It'll be second and ten. And the pass is intended for George Manley, number 85. He's a senior. Well, Backup Coach, nose guard last year and a tight end this year. And Coach Ken Hatfield wants to give both quarterbacks a shot at it because both of them will be vying for the spot whenever Marty Lawton graduates. Which will be this spring, of course. Right. Figure the competition for the QB slot will be pretty spirited this spring? Pretty tough. Does both anybody have the inside track? No inside track as of now. Both are very equal. The middle goes the fullback Joe Arata to the 31 yard line for a gain of four before he's finally knocked down by Richard Brown, a freshman out of Westminster, California, playing the right inside linebacker spot. Nor was very impressive in spring drills on his passing attack. He was 11 of 16 for 222 yards and he also fired a touchdown pass. Third down five upcoming for the Air Force at the San Diego State 30-yard line, and that's Jody Simmons carrying the ball, but he can't get around Thomas Carter back at the 31-yard line, and he's finally separated from the football, although I think he'll be ruled down before that occurred. And that'll set up a fourth down. Air Force football is a special exclusive of KKTV Channel 11 and is made possible by the support of many fine Colorado Springs advertisers like The Phone Booth, Ellis Heating Service, Firehouse Restaurant and High Country Christmas. And of course, Channel 11 is proud to bring the first local live telecast of an Air Force Academy away ball game. On fourth down and five, that's the fullback, Joe Arata, and he has an Air Force first down. Finally knocked out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Jason Rouse, the left guard, through a key block, and Arata, a junior from Milwaukee, makes the first down run on this play. Junior Hot, another fullback, and it seems like the, between Kirshner and Sunquist, and now you have Harada, they're very deep in fullbacks at the academy. Jerry Mason as well. In fact, uh, it's been a great advantage, I'm sure, for Ken Hatfield to make liberal use of his bench in a, a game that really hasn't been in doubt since about midway through the third period. Up the middle, this is Arata again to the 14-yard line, dragged down by Richard Brown and uh, Tom Rulon. Brown, number 48, a freshman, and the Rulon, a senior. And Arata, not very big for a fullback, a 5'9", 189-pounder. But it's interesting, none of the Air Force Academy fullbacks are, are considered particularly big. At 5'10", 190, John Kirshner is the all-whack fullback, but not prototype fullback size. That's right, and in mention, Arata is a senior. That's Jody Simmons with the football, and he's met by Thomas Carter at about the 20-yard, uh, the 15-yard line. That'll set up a third down five after a loss of one. We've got 9.04 left in the ball game. Air Force has 17 first downs in the contest and the Aztec 16, but one of the big stories, four San Diego State turnovers, and Air Force has been able to convert two of them into scores. Air Force leading 31 to 7, 8.45 to go in the contest, and that's Von Cameron. He's knocked down, separated from the football, and San Diego State comes up with it. Richard Brown, there to cover the football. It's his first fumble recovery of the season. He's a six foot three inch, 220 pound linebacker. Watch the play again here. And Cameron is tripped right here of the ball. San Diego State, the Aztecs have the ball. It'll be first and 10 for the Aztecs. Fourth turnover of the night for the Air Force Ball Club. Interestingly enough, John, going into the game, they had turned the ball over 15 times. They have four so far tonight. But Air Force leads at 31 to 7, and we'll be back with more right after these messages.
immediately following tonight's game, jazz guitarist Earl Clue and country rock star Michael Murphy join the cast of Hee Haw. Then at 10, get the latest wrap-up of the day's events with Kelly McHenry, Paul Pack, and Jed Jackson on New Center 11 Update here on KKTV. San Diego State has the ball first down at their own 18-yard line, and Dan Gaston has the football at the moment. Terry Mackey can't pin him down, but he got around to his ankles, and he's upended at the 20-yard line after a gain of two. Well, San Diego State hasn't given up. They're still in there. The defense is playing strong. It's been a long season for the San Diego State Ball Club, and uh, they'll say goodbye to 23 seniors playing in their final game tonight. Of course, the Air Force seniors have one more chance to shine next week in the Independence Bowl. And you better believe it, and I'll be right there to see them shine because I'll have a live report from the Independence Bowl. Well, for your sake, I hope it's drier. It better be. <laughs> this time I won't say I'm taking my raincoat. Less than eight minutes to play in the ball game, and on second down and eight, Jim Plum has plenty of time to throw. But he throws the ball over the head of Dan Gaston. Steve Flewellen in the neighborhood. And uh, Pat Malakowski coming up from behind. Third and eight upcoming for San Diego State. Ken Hatfield giving a lot of people a chance to play tonight in the final regular season game of the year. And I'm sure Ken is enjoying this game because he does have a chance to see some of the players that he hasn't had an opportunity to look at. Probably enjoying this game because he's got a leg up on win number 26 of his five-year Air Force coaching career. And we're 751 away from that. Third down eight. The ball is at the San Diego State 20. The Aztecs trail 31 to 7 and flags fly before this play can get underway. Jack Baker and his six-man Western Athletic Conference officiating crew have been a little busy tonight. They violated the 25-second clock that you see there. And that'll move the ball back to the 15-yard line and we'll get the penalty word from Jack Baker. Dead ball, delay a game, offense. Five-yard walk-off back to the 15. Boy, it's a bad cliche to use tonight as we see the Air Force band performing, and they put on a fine show at halftime. We'll sell most of that, but for San Diego State, when it rains, it pours. Huh? It poured on them ever since the Air Force Academy took the opening kickoff. Air Force in quest of their seventh consecutive victory of the season. It will be the longest winning streak in 13 years. Jim Plum's pass is batted away. It was intended for Vince Warren, number one. That'll set up a fourth down and long yarded situation and give Mike Saxon a chance to exercise his leg again as he competes for the national punting title. Well, one thing Coach Atto has to be proud of, the team did not overlook San Diego State on their way to the Independence Bowl. He was worried about that. That's Mike Saxon about to punt for San Diego State. Steve Bullington will snap the ball. Mike Kirby is deep for Air Force. A little pressure. Flags are down. And uh, the punt dies at the 48-yard line, and another flag is dropped right at that point. But there were flags at the line of scrimmage, and then flags where the punt finally was blown dead. And so we'll let referee Jack Baker sort things out with 7.35 to go in the contest, and Air Force enjoying a 31-7 advantage. See the Air Force folks indicating that the penalty is against San Diego State. Let's see if the referee agrees. We got offside on the black. Fair catch interference on the black. Declined. Both First penalties down, were declined the because the punt was somewhat short, and Air Force takes over in San Diego State territory at the Aztec 48. That's Jim Plum. Fine freshman redshirt quarterback for San Diego State who obviously will inherit the first team duties next year. Right. Now with the score, Air Force 31, San Diego State 7. We're coming right back right after these messages. Air Force has the football first down at the San Diego State 48-yard line. And the fullback, Jerry Mason, picks up a couple to the 46 on the first down before Richard Brown and the company make the tackle. Along with John Owens, Pete Solomon live from San Diego, and we should put in a good word for a fine crew back at KKTV who are helping to bring this game your way under the direction of executive producer Scott Vaughn. I'll tell you, there are a fine bunch of professionals back there, and they're really doing great. Fun to be involved in this first live telecast of an Air Force game back to Colorado Springs. The Air Force Academy Falcons on top 31 to 7. They're taking advantage of the TV time tonight. They played very well. 
Ryan Knorr inside the 40. And the quarterback is finally upended at the 28-yard line in the arms of Kenny Moore, the strong safety. But Knorr showing his fine running ability. Brian had gone into the game having run the ball only eight times all season, but let him run with authority here. And you know you like to see that because when you get Weiss and Knorr in there, both are quarterbacks, both are haven't been used that much so far this year. And when you get a big lead, you like to see two men in there that are going to be fighting for the quarterback position next year. Marty Laughlin graduates. No substitute for game experience. Is Absolutely, it? and you can see he's a brand new quarterback. Check his jersey. That's right. He's got one of the few clean ones left. <laughs> On first down, that's the fullback Jerry Mason. And Mason forges forward to the 21-yard line before Trent Collins can bring him down with help from Daryl Brown, the left inside linebacker. We've seen four fullbacks play in tonight's game for Air Force, and all of them have played very well, particularly... Uh, all lack conference uh, fullback John Kirshner and uh, Ted Sundquist, who has a pair of TDs. And uh, Mason is only a junior. We talked about the competition for the quarterback spot at the academy next year, and I suspect that the competition for Kirshner's spot will be spirited as well, don't you think? Absolutely. Second down and two for Air Force, just outside the 21 yard line of the Aztecs. Gary Mason, the fullback, has a first down, and he's finally dragged down by Richard Brown near the 15 yard line. And off to Gary Mason. They tried Mason in spring practice as a defensive end. However, they decided to change their minds and make him a fullback. Air Force Academy cheerleaders have been uh, very spirited throughout. They continue to entertain the small crowd of 8,844, smallest to ever see the Aztecs at San Diego Stadium. First down Air Force at the San Diego State 14-yard line. Tight end in this alignment. Brian Knorr. <laughs> into the end zone for an Air Force touchdown. That's North's third of the year. Air Force leads it 37 to 7 with a point after upcoming. Brian Knorr coming off the bench. The sophomore quarterback carries it in, and we'll see here. And Brian Knorr also has fakes and speed as he sprints around the right side for a 14-yard touchdown. And the Air Force Academy Falcons on their way to a big win here at San Diego State, 37-7. The extra point, of course, will be tried. Here comes the attempt. That's Sean Pavlich, number two. He's a senior from Prescott, Arizona. Craig's only to a hold. Derry Brown does the snapping chores, and the boot is perfect. Exactly five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Brian Knorr has just directed a 48-yard drive, capped by a 14-yard run by the sophomore quarterback. Air Force leading by a score of 38 to 7. We'll be back with more right after this message. You know, one of the trademarks of a good college football team is the ability to move the ball on sustained drives. And the Air Force Academy tonight has, has had drives of 80 yards. 71 yards, 75 yards, 72 yards, and now a 48-yard drive. They've been able to maintain good ball possession. They kept the ball 205 as Brian Knorr raced over from 14 yards away to build Air Force's lead to 38 to 7. And the Falcons all year long, this is nothing new. They have all year long, they have the offensive weapons to do this. That's Carlos Mateos about to kick off for the Academy. This one might be tough to handle. Tim Sandusky takes it on the fly and he's going to fakes the pass and he's racing for the right sideline. Jim Sandusky dragged down a saving tackle at the 42-yard line by Terry Mackey, a backup linebacker. He faked the pass across the field, something we're seeing more and more of in college football. Watch it again here. That was a great fake by Sandusky. He has it right here. Starts his run, stops, fakes a pass, and he sprints to the right side, and he's off on a good jump. A saving, uh, a saving tackle by Mackey. Mackey came from a long way to make that Yes, he tackle. did. Good running speed. San Diego State has it at their own 41 as we check out the Falcon bench. And Sandusky showed you all along why he's such a dangerous punt returner. Carl Jedinag accepting congratulations on a job well done. He's been a busy man tonight with a pair of interceptions and a fumble recovery. And he played a great ball game. This is all leading up to next week's Independence Bowl. What do you know about the University of Mississippi, the Falcons opponent? Well, they're on a five-game winning streak right now. And they're going to be tough. However, if they haven't played against a, a flex bone, type that the Air Force Academy Falcons use. They're in deep trouble because it takes more than two weeks to get ready for something like this. Ken Hatfield's ball club will roll into the Independence Ball on the heels of a seven-game win streak. That's their longest in a long time. 1970 was the last time they won eight in a row. And uh, this will 
doubtless be one of the most successful seasons in Air Force history. Two bowl appearances in a row. Now Mississippi plays some of the top teams in the nation also. So they will not be an easy task for the Air Force Academy Falcons. They will be up for the game. A couple of players were bounced out of the game because of personal fouls a moment ago on the kickoff return offsetting penalties were called. And so the line of scrimmage is the San Diego State 42 yard line, 41 yard line. That's where they'll set up. Well, San Diego State has to be frustrated about now. Their season is gone. The seniors are leaving here with a loss tonight, and their season is over. Jim Plum, who's quarter back much of the second half for San Diego State, checks out a three-man front as the Falcons are defending against the pass, and that's exactly what they see. The tight end, Jeff Speck, makes the catch and moves into Air Force territory at the 48, with Terry Mackey, who made the tackle on the kickoff return, making the tackle once again. One good thing for the Falcons tonight, when they enter the bowl game, they will be relatively free of injuries. We only saw one man come off injured for the Falcons, and we haven't had a report on him. That's right, Dick Kelly was, uh, Dick Clark, I should say, was helped off the field after a punt play a few moments ago, or first half, I should say, and uh, the hope is that he's not hurt badly. Uh oh one pass is intercepted again. This is by Tom Huggins. Tom Huggins tackled by the tight end. Uh, Jeff Speck almost immediately. He picks up his second interception of the season. Air Force takes over after the Aztecs' fifth turnover of the night. We'll see it again here. Huggins, one of the Falcons' seniors, sticks in front of a plum pass. He picks it off number two of the year for Huggins. And he hails from San Antonio, Texas, and the Falcons are back in operation again with Brian Knorr at quarterback. Falcons have the football at their own 37-yard line, less than five minutes to play in the contest. And that's jo uh, Joe Arata. So Bart Weiss is the quarterback, and uh, Arata makes the carry to about the 41-yard line, four yards on first down. The Lady Cadets cheer on the sideline. And they really do have something to cheer about tonight. I wonder if they're as cold as we are up here. They're probably colder. <laughs> Tell you what, for a guy that lives in the cold country, I'm starting to wonder about you. <laughs> To deal with this stuff all the time? I think we'd rather have snow than this wet weather here. Second down and seven for the airports. Bart Weiss with a lot of running room into San Diego State Territory and down at the Aztec 40-yard line in the arms of Mike Reinhardt, the strong safety. Well, Brian Norris scored a touchdown, so it's Weiss is back in, and Weiss is going to see if he can duplicate the effort. With 4.13 left in the ball game in the fourth quarter. It is again. Weiss with the ball, fakes a hand off to the belly of the fullback, keeps it. He makes a good game for the Air Force Academy Falcons, a first and ten for the Falcons. We do have 4.05 left in the ball on the 40-yard line. Reminder, John, that this telecast is a total community effort, only possible because of the Colorado Springs advertising community lending their support. Up the middle comes the fullback, and uh, Jerry Mason gets to the 31-yard line, or rather, Arata, 32, gets to the 31-yard line after a pickup of nine yards on the first down. We'd like to thank the folks at Daniel Chevrolet, at Military TV and Stereo, Pueblo Bank and Trust, and Bowie Jewelers. Be sure and tell them you appreciate seeing the game live from San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. It's sure been fun for us. It's been great. Second down one for Air Force. They have the ball at San Diego State 31-yard line. They began the sequence at their own 37. And there's Von Cameron moving the ball for a first down to the 27-yard line before Richard Brown can knock him down. While we're passing along, thank you, Sir John. I'd like to take a second to thank Jim Bowman for all his help tonight. He's been helping us with the identification. He's a familiar figure on the academy. Seems like Jim's been there forever. <laughs> first down, Air Force. Just over three minutes to play in the ball game. The Falcons lead 38 to 7, and they have the ball at the San Diego State 28. Mark Weiss gives, oh, what a hit. He gave the ball to the fullback, Arata, and did he get whacked? You know, this ball game got out of the hand at the end of the first half. Carl, I'm sorry, Carl Jedney was selected the defensive player of the game, or the Air Force player of the game, with a pair of interceptions and fumble recovery. What a fine night for the man who was the defensive player of the game of the Hall of Fame Bowl a year ago. That's an honor that's not strange to him. And Jedney was all over the field, a deserving honor. 
after a gain of one. It's second and nine for Air Force, and they have the ball at the San Diego State 27-yard line. And this is winding down to its conclusion with 218 and counted down to the ball game. Cody Simmons picks up some yardage to the 23-yard line. Stopped by Kirk Belcher, the outside linebacker. Air Force sideline looks like a pretty happy place right now. They're looking forward to the Independence Bowl, and of course, uh, Jody Simmons is an offensive halfback, and he's only a junior, so he'll be back next year. What are the prospects for Air Force for 1984? Is it too early to look ahead? It's just too early to look ahead, however, they're losing a lot of seniors on the team, so Coach Ken Hatfield is just looking at everyone, see what kind of rebuilding program he has to do for next year. When you lose a Louthan, a Sean Smith, you lose great leadership. And, and, a, Simmons to the point. and a Kirchner, and a Ted Sundquist, and a lot of their defensive linemen. Less than a minute and a half to go in the ball game. And Simmons is getting some work late in the contest. The ball at the 20-yard line. They got to set up a, a fourth down and two for Air Force. We don't near really need the three points here. Then they go for it. We thank, the, we thank the people at the WTBS and Turner Broadcasting for their fine pickup of tonight's game. We thank Pro Sports and Colorado Cable as well. Pleased that they've all collaborated in helping to send this game back live. Good folks back in Southern Colorado. There's the first out. Three yard gain to the 18 yard line, and the uh, Air Force will keep the football with uh, less than a minute to go in the game. And of course, we have to say once again that Channel 11 very proud to be the first to bring the first live local telecast of an Air Force Academy away football game to the folks in Colorado. Vaughn Cameron to the 15-yard line with 43 seconds to go in the contest. Well, the San Diego Aztecs have a lot of rebuilding to do next year. Their coach has signed a new three-year contract, so they will have the same head coach for next year. Von Cameron comes off the field uh, holding his arm or shoulder. Let's hope that the Air Force doesn't sustain any injuries just seven days away from their second bowl appearance in as many years. This would figure to be the last play of the ball game. Bard Weiss breaks the wishbone, keeps the football, and he's stacked up at about the 13-yard line. And there's no real reason for either team to stop the clock. Four seconds to play in the game. Three, and they're just going to let it run out. That's the end of the game, the final score of tonight's ball game. Air Force 38, San Diego 7. It's been a big win for the Falcons, hasn't it? A very big win for the Falcons on their way to the Independence Bowl next weekend. And of course, I will be there to send some live reports back from the Independence Bowl. Ken Hatfield shakes hands with his opposite number, Doug Scoville. And Coach Ken Hatfield has to be proud of what the team accomplished tonight with only a very minimal amount of practices due to the snowstorm in Colorado. Air Force a winner by a score of 38 to 7, and we'll be back with our post-game comments live from San Diego right after we pause for these messages. Capping an outstanding 9-2 season, the Air Force Academy has just won their final game of 1983 by a score of 38 to 7. This is John Owens, I'm Pete Solomon, and it was a pretty impressive performance, not only by the frontline Air Force personnel, but Ken Hatfield had the luxury of playing some second and third level people who also played very well in the second half, don't you think, John? Absolutely. Coach Ken Hatfield is mighty proud to be able to get the second line players into the ball game before the big bowl game coming up, the Independence Bowl game. And of course, the Falcons showed once again why they have the best offense, the second best offense behind Notre Dame in the nation. And while the offense was able to roll up 38 points, the defense was a big factor. They forced San Diego State to turn the ball over no less than five times. And Carl Jedene on defense came up with a great game, two interceptions and a fumble recovery. And, of course, Carl is used to that type of an honor. Carl plays tough all year long. The entire Falcon defense is tough. And this is a must win. They did it for the WAC Conference, and they are proud to be going home with a victory. Next up for the Air Force, a trip to the Independence Bowl and the Rebels of Ole Miss. That will be a tough game. Even though Ole Miss has not played a team that has the wishbone this year, two weeks is not enough for that. So they will really have to prepare for the Falcon attack. And for San Diego State, it's back to the drawing board. Time to recruit and look forward to 1984. The Aztecs finish up this season 2-9-1 and 1-6-1 and and in WAC competition. We'll be back with a final word.
Hitler must be something wrong with me, Linus. 